Welcome to the far future. The world as you know it is being destroyed. There is no more TV. There is no more YouTube. There is only Dungeons and Dragons. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. And this is the dark future of Twitch. Actually, no, I can't keep up the bit. I, I couldn't think of anything else to say. So, hello. Uh, welcome. Hi. Welcome Hi. to High Rollers D&D. &D. Uh, welcome. welcome to a bunch of tired people play pretend. Uh, also known as Dungeons & Dragons with us, the High Rollers crew. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's wonderful to see you all. We hope you are all well and happy and safe. Um, and we're going to play some Dungeons & Dragons. I'm the Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Joining me this week, we have our regular players plus a special guest. We have Rhiannon. Hello. Say hi. We have Kim. Say hi. Hi. We have Tom. Say hi. Uh, hi. Where's Katie? <laughs> we have Chris Trot. Say hi as he desperately <laughs> he tries to get Katie back in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we did Her have a Katie. Her computer died. Um... Yeah, she uh, just is there a message? Her computer okay. died. She'll be back. Katie She'll be will back. be here be back, once her back. PC reboots. But in the meantime, you can say hello to our wonderful guest, our good friend, Twitch streamer, Ravs. Hello, Ravs. Oh, there she is. Oh, That's hey. me. It's he. It's Ravs. It's he. Top, top number one Scottish Twitch streamer uh, across the platform. Oh, Ravs wow. himself is here. Yeah. What um, an honor. We know that he's your favorite Scottish Twitch streamer, uh, you know. So yeah, let's, we're we're pleased to have him back as Johan, who's a recurring character in our campaign. Back when we recurring. used to play in an actual studio, um, and we're looking forward to having him. This and is, Katie's back as well. Look this is us. the third yeah. time I'm having Tom, real right? difficulty. It's definitely, that's, that's fine. definitely recurring. It is recurring. He is yeah. recurring. Um, yeah. Oh, is Ram's, is Ram's muted? muted? <laughs> I'm fixing it. Okay, <laughs> he's fixing it. He's on it. He's on it. <laughs> the thing is, is we don't know if it's true. It could have just been chat saying it, Chris Trot. We have to check. We have to check. Well, look, Ravs is here. Try now, Ravs. He's pretending. Stop fucking now. around. <laughs> That's me. I'm Ravs. <laughs> <laughs> should be now. <laughs> he should be fine. So, there he is. Uh, technical difficulty. Technical difficulties aside, we've got everyone here. We're ready to play heinous some D &D. stuff anyway. It's probably best we did. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, some really <laughs> atrocious <laughs> shit. Yeah. Really bad. Really, really bad. Right. Oh my God. With that, uh, before we get into today's game, a couple of quick things. The first of which is a big thank you to our sponsor, a D and D Beyond. Chris Trot, Woo! tell us about D and D Beyond. Thank you. Are you ready to be scared? Celebrate the spooky season with 15% off three popular creature feature books on D&D Beyond. Explore Waves Above and Fathoms Below in Ghosts of Saltmarsh. Unlock A Menagerie of Deadly Monsters in the Monster Manual. Immerse! Okay. <laughs> Does that keep happening? Does anyone else see that? That's weird, right? Yeah. Is it because of the spooky? It's because of the spooky thing. Okay, I'll, I'll carry on. Immerse yourself in monster lore with Volo's Guide to Monsters. Venture! Okay, I don't like it. I don't like it. It kind of freaking me out. Probably freaking out the audience a little bit as well. Well, that's not cool. This is all not pre-recorded either, so it's scary that it's happening live. I'll, f I'll finish, I'll finish. Venture into the mists of Barovia with Curse of Strahd. I made it. My heart is really going. Codes can be found on the website, so hurry up and get the spooky sale because it will float away on November 1st. Head to this link, uh, dndbeyond.link forward slash HR monster. Okay, stop doing that. HR monster. Still did it. HR monster. Back to you. Thanks, Chris Trot. Thanks for the drop. I, mean, I don't know what was happening there. I don't know what was going on. So weird. weird. So cursed. He's weird. cursed. Yeah, He's cursed. Just know. all live. We're having some weird technical issues there. Some weird, Crazy strange oh, glitches. But, um, but yeah. Uh, so go check out those fantastic books available on D&D Beyond. We use D&D Beyond and they've been doing loads of really great discounts and deals. And if you do use that link mentioned, uh, dndbeyond.com forward slash... D and D forward slash HR Monster. I can't remember what it was. HR Monster. I, it's in chat. I HR Monster. The... 
Yeah, oh, wait. H on Tra monster. I love these intros so much. You don't <laughs> understand how much joy it brings me every week. I get it just, Kim it really every does. week. <sighs> I know. I just look. I've well. not got a lot going on right yeah. now. I've not got a lot going on right now. This is the only thing funny that happens to me every week. <laughs> but yeah, every check week. it out. Links in chat. dndbeyond dot link forward slash hr monster. Um, and if you're and it will be in the video description on YouTube as well. Using that link really helps us out. So it sa it sa says to DD Beyond, hey, I came from High Rollers continue supporting these guys because they help you so do use the link basically use the link um Cheers. that's it thank Cheers. you thank you chris Rock. um just really quick uh we've got some brand new merch coming out pretty damn soon um there'll be a quill t-shirt coming out very very soon with a really nice design we've got a new dice tray a restock of the plastic dice set which we're going to do as a bundle so you can get the dice tray and a dice set together uh there'll be a restock on the prime hoodies in our prime collection but also we have a big epic winter collection coming up um hopefully around november time which will include a brand new long sleeve t-shirt a christmas jumper an xmas jumper um there will also be some cool uh, accessories we've got some pin badges and maybe more Whoa. maybe more uh, so that's all coming uh, that's all coming in november um and yeah it should be really nice to so save up your pennies perfect gifts for christmas time um and that's pretty much it with that we are going to jump into I got, the I got, dundons I got, I got, I got... Oh. I got one thing real quick. I got ah, I got one <laughs> thing real quick. It's just a, a a little a little friend promotion if you guys don't mind. Uh it's for my friend what? Rihanna Me. who is partnered oh. on Twitch Whoa! now finally. Oh, I just I want to know she did hey. it. That's true. She did it. Hello. Yeah. I did the thing. I forgot to. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, Congrats. She's pal. a real Thanks. streamer Thank now. I'm a real streamer. Done it all on your now. hard work as well. Did it all on your own on your hard work and Yeah, and we didn't help. No, you didn't help absolutely you not. did you all helped um, very much like thank you for all the shout outs and all the like all the raids right. and everything over the over watch the shout outs like, oh, no, twitch.tv slash it re <laughs> it re <laughs> but it seriously, high, you should go, yeah you should go it and uh you should go and sub up to rihanna and she streams pretty frequently like almost every day you've been doing it right like you've been streaming know, monday right? wednesday and oh friday God. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, very, very wholesome streams. Uh, go and check them out. Um, you can also. She follow, also like, has a wholesome? tomato emote. She does, yes, does, uh, which yeah, is being spammed. I chat. was gonna say, you say wholesome. You should have been there for the stream where she was making emotes. It was weird. I mean, wholesome in a kind of like you know, there's a it way. It was of very saying. weird. Aww. Weird. <laughs> weird can still be wholesome. Wholesome can still be weird. Wholesome uh, weird. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I mean, wholesome the fact weird. that she was setting herself off in fits of laughter was pretty wholesome. I mean, that's... <laughs> Cheering. <laughs> to, yeah. I entertain myself. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. It's the best. Anyway. Right. With with oh, that, yeah. uh, thank you, Tom. That was a great reminder. That completely thank slipped you. mine. I'm very tired. Um, but yeah. Uh, with that, we're going to play some Dundons. We're going to do a recap. And then we're going to play some D&D with our good friend, Ravs. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome back to Aroes. Last time, after dreams and visions plague their sleep, the party make their way towards Voxar, a continent they have visited once before, though not by choice. Here, they will find the Valley of the Storms, a place that has called Quillic Ad Kalar since his journey began. A man named Johan waits for them there, as does a mission sent by Hesper, the god of sky and magic. But as their airship, the Storm Chaser, approaches Voxar, they see the continent is engulfed in an epic storm like none that they have seen before. The only solace in the face of such an event comes from Nova Vija, who has diligently crafted a new prosthetic wing for Quill, 
Though hesitant, he tries it on and once again feels the freedom and joy of flight. The storm beckons, however, and as the storm chaser plunges in, the crew battle against fierce winds and storm thick fog, a tornado, and eventually, on their last desperate stretch before the temple, a rampaging storm that is almost alive with fury. Ayla takes her place, after a vision from Quill guides her to channel the lightning that strikes the ship into her own body. The pain is intense, her body scarred, but with each strike, she is taken to another place. A being speaks with her, a divine, a true god from a time before Erois. The party struggles to keep the storm chaser flying as each bolt sends Ayla to speak with this divine force. Eventually, he reveals himself as a divine who fought Hadar. He offers advice and gives Ayla a gift before imparting his name, Thor. The storm chaser lands at the temple and the party make their way into the entrance where a lonely fisherman appears to be waiting for them. And that is where we begin today's episode. Uh, you guys have made your way to the front of the temple, and to describe it again, the temple is built into the Stormwall Mountains, very Minas Tirith uh, style. It's set deep into it. Uh, a giant statue of Hesper, this winged humanoid, rises hundreds of feet into the air over the temple entrance itself. One of Hesper's wings is broken, and one of his eyes has been scarred by lightning, and the staff that he normally holds aloft, the tip has been broken to form into a spear. The storm still rages on around the valley. The thick grey fog crackles with dark purple lightning, but here, around the temple, it seems that there is at least momentarily peace. Standing at a long hallway that seems to stretch into the mountain, a figure emerged from the darkness. A fisherman. Do you want to describe Johan again for us, uh, Rams, for those who don't remember what he looks like? Absolutely. Um, he has got like kind of long brownish hair. The, art, the artwork's on the screen there. Um, and like a, a kind of nice beard going on. Uh, he's wearing like these nice like bluish greys and stuff. Uh, he's got a bit of a neckerchief on the go as well. He's still got his like burnt, jagged like fishing rod that's been struck by lightning. Uh, he's got a little bit more grey in his hair now. Um, since you've last seen him, but um, that's that's pretty much him. Uh, but bit wet, bit dirty. Been waiting for you guys for a while here. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How yep. um, how pissed off does he look? Like how like what kind of vibe is he given? Very calm. Looks very calm. <laughs> okay. 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 Good. Very very good. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, the temple seems to stretch on. But yeah, you see Johan. What do you guys want to do? I hand it over to you now. I think Lucas Perfect. will take a moment of just distinguishing the silhouette and then so the features come into view and then his eyes just sort of widen into a happy grin. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's Johan, everyone, it's Johan, hello. Hello. And I'm going to walk towards them slowly. You're okay. And you're not out of your mind this time. Ah, oh, yeah. Mind. That's right. Uh, last time, uh, I was in a bit of a different way. Oh, it was those yeah. berries. You ate some mushrooms. Oh, berries. That's what it was. Yes, I remember. <laughs> oh, I don't. I wasn't there. I was dead. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You were. There was a bit after that where everyone was, was? of sound mind and physicality. Yeah. There was also the bit on the ship. <laughs> that was Perry. <laughs> yeah, last time you saw uh, it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You haven't actually. Have you met Sentry? Yeah, you have. You met her on the yeah. ship. Because yeah, we, we were on the ship. ship. We were on the storm ship. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. correct. When you rode off on Nimbus. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which and you see oh, yeah. in the hallway behind Johan, there is a small, little white cloud that just kind of. Oh wait, is this my is this my third time on the show? <laughs> just yeah, trying to remember. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, this is very time. cool. Third time. Yeah, of course. The first time was uh, carrying the dead bodies around. Yeah. 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 And the yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. bothering you, I remember. Uh, I, I it see was you. just lying on the ground still yeah. just from after going through being hit by lightning so many times that she just like raises an arm like what's up that's it 
I see you all made it through the storm without my aid. And I can't look at you. Heart- <laughs> at a great cost, it would seem. Well, we can definitely say that your prophecy came true. Um, Ayla conducted the storm. Um, so, so thanks for that vision. I meant yeah, I could thanks for that, buddy. Prepare. Yeah. Thanks for that, buddy. Really, really appreciated you uh, giving us that vision so that I could get struck by lightning several, several times. Yeah, you know, had real you, good times. Had you met me when, you know, you said you would it might not have been so bad. The storms have really gotten worse, a lot worse. Well, well, aware. Type. well aware. Johan, well kind aware. of funny story. Funny story. Yeah, funny story, it, it yeah. Involves... You, you go, you, you fill that one in. <laughs> it involves kind of this extra planet, kind of out of Aroes kind of adventure. We left, we were taken, and we had to kind of make our way back. And that kind of took a lot of our time, actually. Um, we made some friends some in some flying ships in the astral sea it was a thing we made some enemies powerful enemies demons a lot of enemies sort of thing has he been on the berries too (laughs) no it's this is all very true i have a question just quickly rhiannon i can't remember if the last time johan met you was before century found the prime right yes it was before yeah so to johan's mind as a point Sentry looks different. Sentry looks taller, more armored. There is a physical. There's definitely a big physical change to the way Sentry looks. Um, her the previously she had like a purple orb in like her chest that glowed. It's now golden. It's like a golden color, and her armor is slightly different. And she seems larger, and uh, she has a big golden cape made of light uh, that's around her shoulders. Um, so yeah, it, that is one thing that Johan would probably notice is quite different mm-hmm. about the team. Oh, we'll and Quill has century. a mechanical arm. <laughs> a mechanical and a, a messed mm-hmm. up half face as well. Uh, That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Quill, what, yeah. Quill's face is all mixed up? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll look up at Sentry and say, bit of an upgrade then. Uh, and yeah. I, I see you have your wing back. I do. I do. Thanks to Nova. I can, I can fly now. Uh, which is I... perfect. It's the best. Oops, a lot's oh. changed. Uh, there's also one more thing, well, at least for me. Um, Tiangong, this is Johan. What do I see? Tiangong? Mm, hang on, I need to think of something here. Oh. Okay, what? so yeah, uh, you... It doesn't really look any different to your eyes, Johan. It's the same sword Nova's had before. Um, Tiangong takes a moment. There's a moment where he doesn't say anything, or they don't say anything, and then there is a... Greetings. Johan. From from in my head, or like from the sword? Yeah, it would it would be in your uh-huh. head. Yes, it, that's how you would perceive it. Yes, it would be in, in your brain. Like, look around. Like, what what magic is this? Have you met another friend? It's uh well no. Tiangong was here with us the whole time, um, but Tiangong was weak. Uh, I had to find more shards of the sword and uh, to, to pull Tiangong back together. But they're in a state where they can speak now. I am an Eterna. Pleased to meet you. And I'm going to hold out my, my hand to shake the sword. <laughs> <laughs> that is unnecessary. I am still unable of taking a more corporeal form. All right. Well... Uh, As you can see, much has changed here since, you know, you guys were late. Yes, Uh, tell us about you, Johan. We're so sorry we took so long. You're well, you're okay, nothing's nothing's hurt I sat on a top of a mountain for about a month or so, awaiting you uh, as the storms worsened. Um, More of those uh, purple-armored men made their way through the storm and eventually it got too work too bad i had to make my way in and i just only hoped that you would find your way here but you're here at last uh we're gonna have to get in there before things get too bad right we do i don't suppose you saw any um snake ladies leading the charge did i see any snake ladies 
Um, you would have seen <clears throat> no snake ladies. You kind of lost track of the the purple, the remnant soldiers. I think that Johan would call mm -hmm. them all the Valkyrian soldiers. You would have lost track of them. You know, two weeks ago when they came into the storm, um, you've you waited and then yeah, you've traveled through the the fog itself. Um, yeah, you, you yeah, nothing to your knowledge. I've not really seen anyone for weeks. Um, I'm glad that the first faces I saw are yours, I suppose. That's, That's good. A good thing. I, I mm. just full disclosure. I had a vision before we came in here of this snake lady, Zarkira, she's called. Um, we might meet some resistance from her in there. And she's quite a high-ranking officer in the Starbane forces, but it's not, not a thing to worry about. Not a thing to worry about. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I am afraid strong, I don't. Johan? You've been eating well and... and keeping exercised and strong and on your own here for so long in these storms. You've not well, been struck I... by any lightning, have you? Several times, but that does not really bother me. I feel uh... stronger than I ever have. Okay, I'll take yeah, your word I would it. say Lucius. <laughs> Lucius and Ayla, most of all. Lucius, because of your innate sorcery magic, um, relating very much to Johan's sorcery magic, but Ayla, the connection to the storm here. Johan definitely is exuding an aura of considerable power. He's much more magically powerful than he was before when you met him um, outside of the Valley of the Storms. I think it may be proximity to this storm. I, I'm uncertain. Your connection to it is, is very strong. Do you sense the unease in the air, the fact that it's not natural? My, uh, pardon my pun, but I'm afraid that my my memory is quite clouded about anything that's surely gone on here these past couple of weeks. As as things have become more intense, I find myself in a haze of sorts. Well, but we're, I, we're here I now. feel like it's something. I feel something in in this temple, but I'm I'm not sure what it is. We're here to clear things up, okay? And it's it's really good to see you again. And together, we can finally cleanse this place. So what say everybody? We make the most of Ayla's sacrifice, getting us through here, and do some good. Totally cool. I yep. got a belt. That's fun. You did. You got a very cool belt. I got, I got a cool belt. <clears throat> you see the entrance leads deep into the mountain, um, maybe about 15 foot wide, carved from stone. There are no doors, it's just like an open pathway that, that leads itself in. Um, it's a bit longer than what the map may suggest to you. Uh, I've just put you at uh, an entry point. Um, but it, it goes in quite a distance. Um, you'll need to start making your way down there. It is pitch black. Those of you who don't have dark vision, you will need a light source. There is the grey clouds overhead mean that within 10, 15, meter, uh, 15 feet of stepping inside, it becomes very, very dark. I'll uh, just wave my hands and have a couple of dancing lights uh, pop up around me. Sure. Yeah, that gives you enough dim light to see by. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, just let me know when you guys start making your way down. And uh, preferably what order you start walking down in. Yeah, as a, like a temple of Hesper, what's the sort of decoration around here is there like wall well, art right now you're, like a library right, like the last one right now you're still step you're still stood outside there's you're kind of stood outside the entrance okay. out in like the actual valley itself there's just this long stone corridor ahead of you um okay well i i will be behind sentry <laughs> okay no matter I, what i think sentry would sentry would go quite far ahead i think maybe like first yeah. i suppose yeah just to keep everyone yeah, safe. So you're leading the way Sure. Leading the way. Yeah, just put yourself in an order on the map and then I'll describe it kind of thing. Because um, like I said, this the, the map isn't an exact representation of where you are right now. Um, so Lucius and Johan... Uh, well, okay, so we've got Sentry, Nova uh, and Ayla all at the front and then uh, Quill, Johan and Lucius moving your way behind. The dim light cast by Johan's dancing lights and those of you who have dark vision, the passageway extends. A few minutes pass as you walk down it. It's been abandoned. 
pieces of the ceiling of the crumbled stone of the mountain have become loose, dislodged, and fallen to the ground. But as you get closer to what you perceive to be the end of this corridor, the walls do begin to change. They take on a more decorative format, and you begin to see murals um, carved into the stone walls themselves. Each of the murals is of Hesper. The first depicts Hesper protecting himself from arrows with some sort of barrier. The second shows Hesper summoning birds and other winged creatures around him. The third is of Hesper gazing into an orb and seeing a far-off forest. The third is of Hesper calming an angry crowd. Uh, that was the fourth, sorry. The fifth is Hesper shooting fire and ice into the air from his outstretched palms. The sixth is of, is of Hesper creating multiple copies of himself. The seventh is of Hesper bringing a dead person back to life. And the eighth is Hesper turning a pile of rock into a pile of gold. There is an inscription below each one. It is repeated in uh, common, Oren, and Elven. And it reads, I give you the winds and the skies to inspire your sense of wonder and curiosity. I give you magic to make your dreams reality. The passageway eventually opens up into a large temple chamber. It's in ruins. You can see that many of the pews and stone benches and pillars that would have once l kind of decorated this place have fallen to ruin or collapsed. Eight pillars still remain, large, uh, almost two or three people wide. Uh, each of the pillars is carved with robed figures um, and arcane symbols. You can see that further in, uh, just beyond the range of Johan's dancing lights, there is a uh, kind of shallow stone basin carved into the ground, a kind of dipping bowl uh, full of ho tiny holes. Um, beyond that, there appears to be at the very far edge of the temple a large statue of Hesper himself, a winged humanoid with a pair of angelic wings, a very serene, calm face, a staff in one hand and an open book in the other. Um, uh, a golden disc of metal is on the f embedded into the floor just in front of the statue. And if those of you who look up will notice that a similar golden disc is embedded into the ceiling uh, on opposing the one embedded into the ground. So a golden disc set into the floor and then a golden disc set into the ceiling of the temple room itself. Um, it's a very large chamber. There are a few passageways leading off to the side, uh, but yeah, it seems to be empty. You can begin to see scattered around the stone basin. Uh, you do begin to see what look to be bodies on the floor. Oh, okay. can I see what kind of bodies they are? Valkyrian or well, just you'll need to move a bit close. You'll need to move a bit closer to determine more detail. Uh, the dark vision range will only extend so far. Uh, those of you who have it and those who don't, the dim light is only about thirty feet. So, yeah. Okay. Yo Johan, how far have you come into this place already? I waited by the door. I. Okay. I figured there may be trouble in here, and I. It would be best to wait for you be foolish to Seems try it like on my it. own well bodies up ahead um something came in here and something met some foe um, <clears throat> one say one thing i will say is in the shadows of the darkness just beyond dark vision and dim light uh there are they're humanoid bodies but there's a body of some other creature as well a larger uh quadruped uh wings um maybe fur it's hard to hard to tell can Feel I free to move sense? as you wish. You can, absolutely. Give me, what's the range on Divine Sense and what's the effect? 60 feet. So it um, mm -hmm. just detects any celestial fiends or undead within 60 feet. And the range is up to the center of the stone circle. That's 60 feet up to there, I think. Oh, no, 70, sorry. Yeah, you can move You can move forward a little bit and then just... I'll move, I move forward a little bit and cast it. Yeah, I'll do that. Sure. So up to about this middle of the stone center. Yeah. Hmm... I would say there are no, uh, in that range, you don't detect any uh, Celestial Fiends, Fae or Undead. 
the only thing is is that the i mean those are pretty fresh bodies um now that sentry moves up closer you, you can maybe see the outline of valkyrian armor um the same kind of like very sharp clean modern edges to their armor um the weapons are all fairly mundane swords uh, bows that sort of thing um there's also a few metal plates magitech equipment has been broken in here um but you don't see any signs of any constructs or anything like that okay all right i guess i'll relay that back and say yeah uh valkyrian up ahead um Freshly yeah. dead by the looks. They were here recently. Right. We have to figure out how they were killed. If it's, I mean, knowing Hesper, it's some kind of magical traps. Uh... My money's on the giant creature that's at the end there. I don't know what type of foes we'll face in here, but um, it is imperative that you all look out for each other in here. Don't worry so much about me. It's more important that you make it to the end of this temple. I'll look out for you too, Johan. Well, this is this is my purpose to do this, and you know you you are going to do so much more. So just look out for each other in here, Johan. I thought I had a very singular purpose too. The path continues; it always does. <laughs> Is anybody moving further in, or are you just lingering back here for the time being? Can I step uh, forward to like where Sentry is and have mm -hmm. my dancing lights like float over to like the bodies? Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Uh, I'm just going to bring up another little map here for myself. Um, so yeah, imagine you place your. Let's see if I've got like a little token we can use. Uh, yeah, I'll use this little cat. Um, so where do you want to put them? Do you want to put the near the bodies, the little dancing lights? Uh, yeah. range or anything? Uh, yeah, them? 60 feet. 60 okay. feet. So oh, yeah, 120 you could, you could feet, sorry. Yeah, you could you could put it in the center and it illuminates up the space yeah. uh, significantly more. Okay. So as the light floats over, leaving some of you in darkness, but illuminating up, uh, illuminating up the area ahead, you do see some more creatures. At first, they would have blended in with the stone, but in the corners just before two hallways, you can see badly damaged stone creatures um, resembled, made to resemble uh, angelic figures. Um, but with more avian faces, kind of like a statue of Horus that you might see in ancient Egypt, kind of a big hawk face, mm -hmm. but then big folded up wings, clutching staffs. They're set into the wall, but you can see parts of their body have gashes through it, like they've been cut with weapons or pieces of them have been attacked by spells. Um, but they seem to be set into the walls. The creature that you can now see the bodies, the bodies of the humanoids, they are definitely Valkyrian soldiers. Mixture of quite young and quite old, um, figures of various different races, humans, dwarves, um, maybe an Eladrin in there as well. Uh, but the striking creature is kind of up, spread amongst the bodies, blood splashed across the ground, blood covering their giant leonine paws. Uh, there is a giant creature with the body of a lion and then a more cat-like regal face. Uh, they wear ceremonial armor around their shoulders, um, and around a headdress, um, all decorated in emblems of Hesper. Um, and a giant pair of wings are folded out, and they have been killed um, by multiple wounds um, and various other sort of uh, blows. Quill, can you discern what happened here? I can use the eye. Uh, I was thinking of just detecting the magic so we can avoid it ourselves. Hopefully they only target Valkyrian, but we can't be sure. Do you think I don't know how protected I these, would be here. These pictures of Hesper, is he doing? You know Hesper better than us. Is he likely it's, to it, have it's... set some traps like this? What's that that gold, glowy circle thing? That's transmutation. Like look it's it. the schools of magic. Quill. Look at schools? everyone. There's schools what? of magic. Huh? Yeah, it's like Ayla's like uh... what. <laughs> gone over quill what was the purpose of this temple why why was it built what is it here for it's a great question quill 
Tom Hazel. I... <laughs> Hello, Tom. I, uh, um, I mean, <laughs> what's the purpose of any temple? Well, right? some temples are a rite of passage, some require sacrifice, some are for ceremonial purposes. I guess all are for worship, but I feel like if we knew what this temple, the purpose was for this temple, we'd know perhaps some of the defenses, some of the reasons things may be attacked. Necessary. You know, if reasons. I had a temple, yeah. If I had a temple, it would be a temple of knowledge, and I'd attack people who didn't put their books back on the shelves in the correct categorical order. Um, That's but quite Hesper, an aggressive... But surely Look, you'll find them. You must put them back I like the alphabetically. Thing. <laughs> if anyone came into but my temple that's... and they were a bit of a dick, then I'd hit them. Exactly. Well, so why would Hesper <laughs> I mean she's practically a lightning god anyway, so you know, who knows? In the future these are things we have to take into consideration. Why is there a big leonine creature in ceremonial robes? would it be passive to most worshippers, I mean, I wouldn't be impressed if if I wouldn't I wouldn't be the most dedicated worshipper of Hesper if, as soon as I enter his temple, I get mauled to death by a giant lion. If you see what I mean, mm. I just want to kind of. I mean, yeah, if, if yours is answer these a questions. temple, it's I've, oh my god. <laughs> if I feel like if yours is a temple of literary knowledge, then Hesper's would be one of arcane knowledge. Maybe these these creatures are here to display his prowess with spells. Maybe they're just to showcase all the different schools. That's what all these pictures are, the eight schools. But if, if anyone is a master of all of them, well, it's Hesper. I, but in terms of the defenses, he has to be protecting the spear, I suppose, or some kind of repository of all of his knowledge, all his arcane knowledge. It may be that why... these men... Okay came in and attacked the creature looking for what they want hard to hard to tell exactly you guys are still looking at this from very very far away um you know like 60 70 feet ahead of you is, is where the action took place but there's definitely blood on the ground the the dancing lights is illuminating kind of streaks and splashes of blood um the weapons are scattered all over the place um some of the soldiers look really young, like they're teenagers, and some of them look to be more like in their 40s, maybe 50s. It's a very weird mix. Could just be Valkyrian vandals up to no good. Just desecrating a holy place. Wouldn't put it past like Valkyrian have... to do something like that. I feel like Valkyrian always have orders. Do they not? Valkyrian Court of look for technology. Revenue. Valkyrian forces look for technology and power, so if there's an artifact or a spell or or something here that could benefit the Valkyrian Empire, that's why they're here. Well, but, Quill is here to well, claim well, it too. I guess we're not going to get, get anywhere first. without going in. I mean, <laughs> okay, but I'm, I'm not going to say it. Yeah. I'll walk you guys are absolutely you sure. I'm going to detect magic. I'm not going to waste 10 minutes casting it. I'm just going to spell slot it. Okay. Okay. Um, and then what you're just like, what are you looking at in anything. particular? The, I'll, I'll take a look at the golden the golden plates. And, um... right. You're going to need to move up to that golden disc. It's right in front of the statue up ahead. It's beyond the stone basin. So. Um... Okay. So, I mean, detect magic okay. has a range of 30 feet. 30 feet. So, so you need to get pretty close. <sighs> Is, it, is there anything yeah. I can see, like <clears throat> traps, or...? You don't see any arcane sigils. Uh, I think that when you look at the pillars, as you're moving past the pillars, each of the pillars is enchanted with a glyph that glows in the ma in the color of the magic of the School of Magic. And each one is clearly a, you know, represents a School of Magic, as you summarized. Um, each of these pillars and the murals behind is a representation of each of the Schools of Magic. Abjuration, Conjuration, uh, I'm going to remember all of their names now. Um, you know them. Mm -hmm. Intuition, yeah, so it's perception. yeah, and, it, and it, well, the other thing to note, Quill, is you would notice it is in a particular order. It's abjuration, conjuration, um, divination, your own school of magic, um, enchantment, evocation, illusion, necromancy, transmutation, um, and it, it's set in an order as you go down the pillars, basically. 
Uh, when you guys start making your way closer to the center, yeah, you can now see that a battle took place here. Uh, there are five Valkyrian soldiers' bodies. There are blood trails. You do get the sense that there were more creatures than this. There were more Valkyrians here. There are footsteps that lead off to the uh, east. Um, but you also now notice, yeah, this Leonine creature. Uh, I would like everyone to make a history. Arca no, history or arcana. I'll let you choose. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh That's God, a good okay. old minus one to anything. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody? 21 for any. Nova. Go on. Uh, anybody get over 15 apart from Nova? Because I know Nova got 21. 16. Lucius? 16. Anybody else? I didn't. Nope. Nope. Not okay. Rolled bad. Nova, Nova and Lucius, you, you identify this creature. You both know that it is a type of Sphinx. Now, Sphinxes come in different types. Nova, you would know that this is um, a version of a Sphinx called uh, a Gyno Sphinx. Uh, there is another, a more powerful form of Sphinx, but this is the slightly lesser powerful one. Uh, Lucius, you've probably been told stories, like Nanny No Fear probably told you stories about Sphinxes and clever heroes who would solve their riddles and get precious you know, treasures and those sorts of things and place curses on people that couldn't answer them and stuff like that. Uh, that's your kind of knowledge that this is a sphinx and that they have, they're quite magical. They have magical abilities. Um, they normally are guardians of sacred places. They provide tests. Nova, you know a bit more. You know that this is a gyno sphinx. They are normally placed here, created by powerful beings to serve as protectors and guardians. Um, especially related to the gods. Uh, so it would make sense that they are here. They are also seers and oracles. They have a great power over magic and knowledge. Um, so seeing them in a temple of Hesper actually, yeah, makes a lot of sense uh, that these creatures would be servants of Hespers, really. Um, they have the ability to know the past of objects and items. They can, you know, do all sorts of magic, uh, especially divination magic. But this one is dead. Um, very dead. Very dead. Okay. Very, very, very dead. Aww, this, sad. this is Nanny Norfit. Uh, she gave me a book about this. She looks different. It's a sink. <laughs> a, a sink? A what? Yes. Very uh, powerful beings. Incredible. I mean, uh, tragic as well. Uh, we need to be careful. Uh, Nova's like. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, as you guys look around, are yes, you looking at anything uh, else? <laughs> Go on. Yes, Lucius, it's called a Sphinx. Uh, that's very insightful of you. Um, it makes sense that it would be here. Um, a seer and an oracle, it, it's pretty sad that it's been killed. They're very powerful, knowledgeable beings. Quill, when you look around uh, with your detect magic 30 feet what are you looking at are you moving anywhere else um right now you can only really see this stone basin and the pillars that's within range um yeah i mean if i can't see any traps on the floor or anything then i'll move up to the stone basin and see if there's anything special there <laughs> yeah um, the basin there's no there's no magic but looking at a closer it is a kind of recessed stone bowl but there are dozens of tiny holes um and they seem to go quite deep and you can almost feel like a very faint breeze, like very, very faint though, uh, coming from these holes uh, into the basin. As you are stood there looking at this, you hear kind of rumble and you see that you didn't see them because they are inward of the doors. The doors you came in <laughs> slam shut, uh, connecting with stone. Oh. And then lightning surges throughout the walls, the floors, the doors of the entire temple. I would like everyone to make oh. a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, I rolled initiative. <laughs> uh, Quill and Nova do not get the plus three. They don't know. They're too far away. They're too far away. So I, uh, so I need to know who gets a lower than a 17. I got 15. Uh -oh. 15 for Johan. 14 yeah. for moi. 14 for Sentry, so two fails. Oh, wait, no, 14 for... No, 18, sorry. I forgot okay, to add 18. the thing. 18. Is that it? 20 for Nova. Johan's... 20 for Nova? 25. Johan's the only one who failed? Yeah, okay. I do, do, do. All right, um, so you... Five lightning damage. Uh, do you have resistance to lightning, Johan? I do. 
I do, yeah. So, two lightning damage. The energy arcs through the room. Those of you who are quick enough manage to jump up into the air as the, the lightning passes over the floor um, or bursts from the pillars. But you see it, it, the bodies that were laying on the ground and the two giant stone statues, as the lightning touches them, you see the bodies begin to twitch and lurch. Oh. Uh, and a, dis, a disembodied voice kind of echoes out, just like, No! Too late! You must... And it just goes, kind of, it's cut off. The giant stone creatures... And you can see that their bodies are um, just covered in sort of lightning. Their eyes begin to flash and glow blue. The bodies, as they open their mouths, just this dark blue glow inside their throats and in their eyes kind of gives rise. And you just hear them kind of hiss, Hate! Fear! Rage! And it's gonna be initiative, everybody. Oh! That's how they're oh. activated. That's a rude Bar, trick, Hesper. Bold of you to assume it's Hesper. Hesper wouldn't hurt me. I... I am his champion. <laughs> <laughs> Lucius, is that six total? Yeah! Uh, Johan, seven total? Excellent. Yeah. Whoa! So fast. Uh, Quill. <laughs> uh, 21. 21. Ayla. 20. 20. Sentry. 13. 13. And Nova. 22. <laughs> Gotta go one higher. Um, well, Nova, you are the first to react as, yeah, these five Valkyrian bodies are alive, like, Alive is a strong word. They have become animated by the lightning that passed through them, as have the two stone statues. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to straight up... Two of them are right um, next to you. Yeah, okay. So, my shield is activated. Um, mm -hmm. Is it bonus action? I don't, I, I'm still learning how to use Tiangong shield form. Um, but, yeah. The, my yeah, shield you just saw, it's a physical shield, just, so... Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to attack with Tiangong and Green Flame Blade. I said it right. Mm -hmm. Look at me. I'm a hero. Uh, so, hit one on the one nearest to me is uh, 23 to hit. Uh, that hits. Uh, Roll your damage. 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points of slashing damage. Mm -hmm. Sorry, normally I write all my attacks out because I'm never first, but I'm first this time. Um, That's fine. So uh, when you strike it, Nova, uh, oh. yeah, roll the extra flame damage. Once you finish the damage on this one, I'm going to need you to make a dex save. Okay. Uh, five. Um, so the one that I've hit with my sword mm -hmm. takes you did 11. Uh, five, six, seven points of flame damage. And mm -hmm. the other one, the one next cool. to it, gets -hoo -hoo! 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 points of flame damage. You see that both of these bodies, the lightning coursing through them, seems to disperse some of the fire. Um, they are resistant to fire. Um, and I need you to now to make two deck saving throws, actually, for me, please. Um, as Cute. you strike the first one, uh, as it cuts through the creature, lightning erupts from its wounds and arcs straight into you. And then as the fire torches the one next to you, the same thing happens. As soon as its body is burnt, lightning arcs out of it towards you. God. First saving uh, throw. 15 and a 13. Right, 15 is a success. You take half damage. You take four lightning damage. Um, however, the other one is a failure. That's 11 points of lightning damage. So these two blasts as you strike the creatures launch into you. And you can okay, see that, that yeah, they are, but their nothing. internal bodies are being channeled with lightning that reacts as they uh, are struck. Uh, whole turn, you don't want to move? Uh, I can't really without them attacking me, so I will okay. stay where I am for now and probably regret it. Well, when I will. Stone statues uh, do something. Uh, I'll, I'll be fair to you. They, that was their reaction to use that kind of arc of lightning that struck you, so they couldn't make attacks of opportunity against you if you move. Oh damn! Okay. They don't. They've uh, used their reaction. Case, so. I'm going to hop behind a pillar. Five, ten. Sure. Well, while you do that, Quillac and Kalar. It is your turn. Um, 
question. Yes. My flight says that a flying speed of 50 feet while not wearing medium or heavy armor. And I am wearing oh. medium armor. Oh, well. Guess you can't fly right now. Uh, so I just can't fly. Oh, shit. You can. You just need to wear light armor. Then you can fly. Just strip. Ah, okay. Huh. Well, uh... It's almost like there's a it's, it's almost like there's a a payoff for high AC or flying. Yeah, that's weird. Huh. Oh. Oh, okay. I got, uh, hmm. Okay. Um I want to check something. Uh so I'm going to move 5 10 15 20. I want to move down behind sentry and with my 30 feet of vision. Can I see the pillar that has necromancy on it? Uh, the pillars don't have the the pillars actually, well they do have the symbols on them yeah you can see the pillar that has necromancy it would be the seventh one it would be this one I think um, w is anything different with it is what I mean is, is it no, no okay okay cool alright um, I just wanted to see if, if these pillars were the things powering these individual things but Nope, that's cool. Um, in that case, I would like to cast aid. Uh, so three people. I'll go with Ayla, Lucia, and Sentra. Uh, okay. You all get plus Ayla, you're 10. next, by the way. Ten. Ten maximum hit points. Increase to your maximum hit points. Oh, sweet. Get, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So it's not it's different to temporary hit points. This increases your maximum, so you can be healed up to it as well. Oh. And that's me. Cool. Uh Ayla. Ah, um Hello. I will rage, first of all. Um <sighs> and then I'm gonna go up and hit the duty what's it on the right hand side. Is sure. on Bobbly. That was the one that the flames hit. Um Cool. Uh I'll give him a schmeck. Sure. Uh eighteen plus twelve. That will hit. <laughs> Yay! Uh so that is going to be ooh, new damage, new damage. Yes, because you okay, have your higher strength now. Oh. 16, 17, 9, wait. Sorry. Uh, yeah, 16, 17, 19 damage from the hammer. 19 damage. Uh, okay. So you strike this thing and you, I mean, it rips through parts of its body. I'm going to make a check here. DC 5 plus damage taken, 19, 24. And then there is... Okay, yeah, it can't physically save against that. You smash the hammer into this creature and you rip part of its body open. Part of its torso goes flying and yeah, it just flies back dead. Excellent. Nice. Can I hit the other one? <laughs> and then you step up and hit the next one. This one was the one that Nova's heavily damaged Ooh. as well. So this one's very bad. Same one. So 18 plus 12 again. Yeah, thirty is enough to hit these shambling <laughs> lightning lightning corpses. Uh, and that one was one less damage, so eighteen damage with the hammer. Eighteen damage, so it can't physically make the save. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, again, you kind of bring the hammer down, crushing its brain, just <laughs> demolishing its skull, and it just collapses to the ground. Um, anything else on your turn, Ayla? I'm just going to move next to uh, the group so that people are within my aura, which will give them lightning resistance. Ah, oh. very good. Nice. Uh, is that, that's around you, right? So that anybody within 10 feet... If they're feet... within 10 feet of me, they take half damage from lightning. Right, so that's everybody but Quill right now. Um, so I'll, so I'll Actually, could okay. I move? Can I move here? And then I'll get everyone, yeah. right? Then you'll get everyone, I'll move yeah. There. yeah. Then absolutely. I'll get everyone. Okay. Perfect. The shambling bodies rush forward. Um, they're going to rush several different targets. One goes for Johan, one goes for Lucius, and then one is going to come around here and go for Sentry. Um, they don't seem particularly tactical. They just rush towards either the closest target they can or the one that they think presents the most easiest opportunity. Uh, so against Johan, yep. that is a 9 to hit. Uh, that's a miss. Lucius, 15 to hit. Yeah, I'll hit. 
Now I hit Lucius. So that's going to be... Uh, six points of bludgeoning damage, um, Lucius. And then six points of lightning damage. Well, that's, uh, I've got resistance on that. So that would be three points okay. of lightning damage. Then, half. Nine, and then sentry eight to hit you. So no hit. just clank into your shield. And they just move with this kind of screeching, disembodied movement. They just hiss these same words. Rage, fear, hate. So they just slam their bodies up against you, uh, coursing with lightning. Sentry. Um... Hmm, that dude's right there. Um, okay, I'm gonna move. Do I move? Do I move? Yeah, I'm gonna move up to here, and then oh, five, ten, twenty, right. twenty. Yeah, and then can I cast enlarge mm -hmm. and become large in charge, please? So, Johan, you see Sentry's form. Uh, this kind of visor encloses over her mouth like mm. a helmet, and then her body seems to like shift and warp as it grows to a large size. She becomes like 10 yeah. feet tall. Um, I'm just going to look up an all like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then can I attack the two in front of Johan? Uh, is it large an action to cast or a bonus action? Oh, yeah, it is. It's an action to cast. Action. Sorry, yeah. Cool. That's right. Do you have I any bonus action you want to do? Uh, that's all good. I'll just get ready. I'm going to hit them. Okay. <laughs> well, as you enlarge, the large stone statue embedded into the wall pulls itself free Here and begins oh, towards the nearest threat, which, to be oh. fair, is sentry. Every, uh, ever since you learned enlarge, every battle has been like a Power Rangers fight. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tom, if you knew enlarge, face it, we'd all be doing it. We'd we'd all be. Oh yeah. We'd all be yeah. Yeah. Like up every it's single just a, fight. The titans <laughs> fighting, and then all the tiny little humans below, and yeah. even smaller uh, hollow bone one, bird. This one will make two slam attacks against Sentry. Oops. Alrighty. I'll Twenty-three to hit. As well. That one hits. And eighteen to hit. So the first one I believe hits, and that the one second one hit. misses. Okay. Uh, so concentration, concentration once you know the one. damage. Yeah, once you know the okay. damage, though. Uh, so that's going to be 10, 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, um, so DC is 10 on the con save, on the concentration save. Alrighty. That's in that one. I'm tiny oh, sentry. Oh my god. Uh, whoop, 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 whoop. Um, and then I guess Don't they like go and we use the rest of its movement just to step in. Um, <laughs> as yet. Oh, <laughs> Slams you once, just kind of clocking you on the jaw, and it stumbles you. Your concentration's lost on the spell, and you just kind of collapse down into a smaller size, um, looking up at this giant thing now looming above you. Uh, but that's it's go, Johan. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, oh god, oh god, so much happening. Okay, I'm gonna uh, bonus. Okay, just you're off, Johan. By the way, all right. So I'm going to take out a little water skin and let out a little scoosh of water uh, and I'm going to cast um, Tidal Wave. Um, sure. It's 30 feet long and 10 feet wide, but I'm just going to use it to blast this, this big statue right here next to Sentry. Uh, so cast if you that. want to do that, does it have, it, I'm assuming it has to start at you, right? Like it's. Uh... Oh, does it? Well, here's so, a question um, I have. I have Tempestuous Magic as a bonus action that when oh. I cast a spell, I can fly up to 10 feet without provoking opportunity attacks. So I was wondering if I could, like, flow over here and, like, slam him. I, absolutely. I will let you do that. So you fly over Sentry, and then you... Mm -hmm. <laughs> this water surge just erupts out from you. Perfect. What's the... Um, what do I have to do for the spell? Is this, like, a uh, throw, Let or? me cast that for you it is uh bam it's a dc 17 deck save oh okay uh well that is a dc 17 you say yeah i rolled a 17 but its dex is minus one so it's a 16 so this oh. surge of water slams into the creature um and it also knocks it prone ah Mm. Now, what type, of, what type of damage yeah. is this? This is bludgeoning damage. 
But it is from, I would say, this is a magical attack. It's a magical spell. Yes. Well, I'm saying that's... Mm. Uh, These things... Hmm. I, you know what? I'm going to be... I'll, I'll, I'm going to say that it takes some of the damage. Um, I'm going to give it resistance against this. Normally it's immune to this type of damage, but because it is from a spell, I'm going to give it resistance instead, because otherwise it's going to waste your cool spell. Um, yeah. Also... So uh, roll damage for me. Uh, roll damage. It, oh, there's 13 bludgeoning damage. Oh, sorry. It did it automatically, didn't it? Yeah, it did it automatically, so, yeah. Uh, six instead. Um, uh, and also, these two zombie boys and the big statue also take six lightning damage from Heart of the Storm. Ah, the two zombie boys take no lightning damage. However, the, the stone it's... golem definitely does. Um, yeah. Awesome. Because it kind of gets blasted by the lightning. And you said it knocks it prone as well? It knocks it prone, yeah. Okay, cool. So just remember, if somebody can help remind me that this one is not prone. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. the water slams into it and knocks it prone. Lucius? Uh, I'm going to use my font of magic, the twin level 2 chromatic orbs of acid um, mm -hmm. at the two zombos that are further away from me. So that one and that one. That one and that one? Uh, yup. Uh, just as a point right, you do still have an enemy within five feet, so you'll be at disadvantage still. It's not. It, it, it doesn't matter which one you target if you have an enemy within five feet, I believe. In which case, I'll target the one in front of me. I could be wrong about that, but... <laughs> but you'll still have disadvantage, because right. you're still within five feet of an enemy. So as long as you're within five feet of a hostile creature, you have disadvantage on ranged attack spells. Okay. 17. Uh, 17's still enough. 17's still enough to hit the one of them. Um, and then the other one. acid. Uh, okay. on that one. It's a little while with the old D&D <laughs> Beyond. So 11 is going to be mm -hmm. my lowest, I think. And yeah, the second uh, one probably doesn't hit. The second one doesn't hit, unfortunately. this uh, the, the one creature next to you is hassling you too much and throws off your aim. Um, you start to feel as well, Lucius, like it's your chest really hurts. Like it's kind of getting hard to breathe. Like the, the noise of the fight and everything going on around you, like you're kind of like your chest is hurting as, as you're starting to fight. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the acid splashes against one, coats the creature in acid, and you can see it writhing, but it doesn't scream out in pain or anything like that um, as you do so. Uh, also and then after... six points of necromancy as Ooh. well. Uh, to the same acid. one? Same one, please. Oh, six points. That one, well, I have to make a check. Uh, PC 11. So you see the acid washes over this thing, and it parts of its body is like breaking apart, you think that that should have killed it, but the creature is just barely hanging on. Um, I'm going to... The, its undead nature is keeping it alive. It seems to have been animated. Okay. I'm not doing anything. Carry on. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's in reaction to your spell hitting it, so... Yeah. yeah. Hmm... Uh, one of the stone creatures steps on uh, another one of these creatures. It just it just literally steps on it and kicks it out of the way as it pushes past it. Just <laughs> knocks it to the side, um, pushing it aside. Uh, when it arrives, it is going to... I need everybody, that's all of you guys, in fact, to make wisdom saving throws, please. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's fine for me, but uh-oh. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. I didn't roll that well. Uh-oh. 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 Way. Oh, <laughs> nice. Uh -oh. <laughs> Who got oh, wow. no seventeen? Me. Me. Oh god. Like, so pretty much century. everybody but Sentry. Yeah. So all of you are affected by the slow spell. On a failed save, a target Yay! can't use reactions. Oh, its speed is halved, and it can't make more than one attack on its turn. Uh, in addition, okay. you can take either an action or a bonus action. That's it. So you feel like your body is can... slowing down. We can make wisdom saving throws at the end of our turns. You can, yes. At the end of your turn. I'm each never of your turns. <laughs> That's well it Fuck. can also um you can also potentially try and knock this thing uh unconscious and then that would end the spell as well. Um but that's it, that's its Don't turn. Uh, worry. Nova, Nova Quillek, Ella in that order. Okay. Um so from where I am uh man there's can i eldritch blast so from where i am i've got you know all the kind of three zombies on my right and the stone mm -hmm. boy 
Can I Eldritch Blast, given that Lucius and Ayla are in my line of fire? I probably can't, can The I? Golem is easy to hit because it's taller than Lucius and Ayla, so you could easily yeah. try and hit that without problem. I would say that um, maybe the third uh, Valkyrian soldier zombie, which is quite far away next to Johan, that's definitely going to get at least some bit of cover because it's a tricky shot. The other two I'm not going to give any particular bonuses to. Like, you can still see them. You can always just shout out, like, Lucius, yeah. move, bam. Ayla, move, bam. Yeah. You know. Duck! Uh, in which case, can I? Uh, I would like to Eldritch Blast. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go for the Stone Golems. I'm going to just go all three the same, All three the on the same, same one. one? Yeah. Yeah, the one to the right that isn't prone. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. that is. Okay. Uh, that is an 18 on my first hit. Uh, uh, first 18 beam. hits. Um, and then that I rolled an eight plus uh, five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, 13 blast damage. Force damage. <laughs> uh, on the first beam. Slams into damage. it. Yep. Second one is a sixteen plus nine, so twenty-five. Uh, and I rolled a three plus eight. Uh, no, wait, no, sorry. Five, six, it's seven, fine. eight. Eight, uh, eight on the second beam. Total. Eight yeah. on the second Three beam. plus five. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Slams into it again. Oh, last one. I rolled a four plus uh, nine, so thirteen to hit. That is not enough. It, even though this thing Don't doesn't dodge out of the way, the the stone form, its heavy stone body, the beam just deflects off of it. <laughs> uh, and then wisdom saving throw. Five on my wisdom saving throw. Yeah, five. You are so, still nope. slowed. Uh, Quillock and Kalan. Oh, I would like to cast Mask Your Wounds, please. And mm -hmm. I have sure. the feature Spellbreaker. So everyone that I heal is slow is, is lower than uh, Spellbreaker. It probably doesn't. When you restore yep. uh, HP to an ally with a spell of first level or higher, I can also end one spell. Equal to uh, or yeah, lower case, of my choice. Yeah, on I, that creature. I wasn't sure if Damn. it had like a one creature. You may end the spell on one creature or something like that. But if, yeah, if it affects Very everyone, nice. it affects everyone. Everyone, what baby. Level the what level is the spell under? Yes. In that case, the slow effect ends on everybody. Uh, uh, nice. And hey. everybody heals for 3d8 plus 5. So 17 HP healed to everyone. I have 17 Whoa, HP nice. to everybody. Nice. Nice. Uh, Back up to the health. Health. Man. Healing's pretty Flex. fucking good now, huh? You should do Flex. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, act, <laughs> bonus actions? Uh, bonus action would only be a cantrip, so nah. Okay. Uh, Ayla. Cool, I can hit twice. Yeah. Um, I want to hit the Zombobly that's next to Lucius, please, first. Sounds I'm going to try and take out the smaller th threats. <laughs> that's a natural 20. Nice. Hey! Nice. Wait, let me. Uh, so, that's gonna be oh, yeah, brutal critical. Brutal critical, you, you see. So uh, it would. Yeah, I mean, you I want to calculate damage. it for the sake of it, you, Mark, because this is you fun. Do, you do that. So you do that. It's gonna be just you know. twenty-one for the base, then yep. plus another seven, so twenty-eight. Yes. Uh, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. 32 points of damage. Oh, you, I mean, it's mush. You just slam the hammer down. Just the head comes off. Um, Ravs, for your benefit, we do crits differently in high rollers. Okay. So I do, right. you maximize all the dice and then you roll the dice okay. again. So that way you're always oh, getting gosh. higher than you could have possibly gotten on a normal roll. Um, oh, okay. That's, that's cool. You guys as well. It goes against get a... us too. Yeah, uh, really I sucks. see. Got, got to keep yeah. it fair, yeah. But yeah, this, um, the one that you hit was the one that Lucius had kind of sprayed with acid and it was somehow still alive and the crit just demolishes it. It just rips it apart, falling, oh, falling apart. Down. Um, can I turn around and hit the one that's sort of behind me oh, as well? Yeah. Next to Quill? Yeah. So there's one next uh, to Quill. 21 to hit. Yeah. These things aren't particularly hard to hit yet. Easy. They're ACs 13, by the way, on the zombies. So. Cool. Oh, fooled. I rolled a 10 on my dice, so that is... 15, 19, 20, 21 on oh, the hit. Uh, it, I mean, oh, this thing, if you had dealt one more point of damage... strength! 
uh, the, the blow just collides into its chest. It kind of concaves in. You can hear the creature like, <laughs> and the lightning just crackling out of it. This one, however, I forgot to do their lightning. Can you make a deck save for me, Ayla? Not that it's particularly useful against you, but... Uh, 24. 24. <laughs> so you take 11 half to 5 lightning damage, half again to 2 lightning damage. <laughs> as this thing, <laughs> a blast of lightning erupts from it as it does strike you. I'm guessing it doesn't take my lightning damage at all. Uh, no, it doesn't take anything. Yeah, it's immune fine. Uh, to it all. Okay. Right, uh, the zombie creatures go. There is one which is barely standing and then the one next to Johan. They're just going to make normal attacks. Uh, one against you, Ayla, for a 17. I think that misses. No. And then Johan, uh, that is a 7 to hit you. Both miss. Yeah, that's a miss. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sentry. <laughs> cool. Um, I would like to attack the one next to Johan, please. Sure, go for ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. it. 16 plus 9, 15 to hit. No, 25 oh, to hit, sorry. Are you prone? Oh, nice. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. If you get crit? No, nah. no crit. No crit. Uh, this, cool. The first hit so, will hit, though. The, the first number hits. Yeah. So D8 plus 5. I'm going to use a level 1 Divine Smite, and then because it's undead, so that'll be 4 D8. Are you hitting the zombie guy, sorry? The zombie guy, yeah, yeah. Yes, ah, right, sorry. I thought you were hitting the gun. But yes, uh, this is oh. now counts as undead. So when you used your thing before, they yeah. hadn't been animated yet. So, But now it is undead, yes. So you get an extra, nice. uh, you get the extra dice. So that is Enter. 25 uh, total plus a d4. 26 damage. You, yeah, I mean, this thing, uh, you lob its head off just with one of Her Majesty's rose. Um, prevent the creature from keeping its you know necromatic body still going, just cut its head off and it dies however before you do it does make you need to make a deck save for me it will use its reaction cool. before it fully collapses no problemo that is a 22 total uh so it's 11 half to 5 lightning damage as it nice. blasts you as you strike it sweet nice and then i'll swing around and make a second attack against the prone golem yeah so this is the one you had advantage against i thought you were yeah. attacking the, the golem before so no mind. that's all good well on that one on the first one <laughs> Oh, not much better on the second one. Uh, that is nine, 14 to hit. 14 is not enough. Even though it's on the ground, you strike down with the magic okay. sword and it just cleave. It just the stone creature is literally made of stone. The golem just shrugs yeah. off the blow um, as you do strike down. Uh, anything else Alrighty. on your turn, Sentry? Um, let's see, position's pretty good. Yeah, I think I'll stay. Well, do I stay here for now? There's two of the guys. Um. <laughs> Oh, scary times. No, I'm, I'm gonna... No, I'll stay. I'll stay. I'll stay. I'll You're take gonna stay? It. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the, cre the big stone golem next to you will stand up. Uh, when it does so... Uh, I can't You're see... Not pro no, no more. You're not pro no more. Uh, everybody but Nova, make a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Oh, oh no. Free. <laughs> 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 mm. <laughs> so once again, anybody who got Set lower than... Trees area. Oh god. Uh, yeah. So it's a plus it's plus four. Yeah. Oh it doesn't yeah, matter, I rolled I rolled five, two, ten. so I'm down. It's, it, plus, I'm, I'm it's not plus ten for saving throws. Not is plus it? ten, no, I mean I mean the area is ten feet, sorry. Oh yeah, it's ten feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh I was just like I don't think it's plus ten. No, yeah, it's not uh, plus ten. <laughs> so I think everybody but Johan passes this save. Uh Johan, you I, I, I don't pass. Uh I don't what did pass. You get? Oh, what did you roll Shit. later? Sorry. Trash, oh, okay, all right. Two. Okay. Uh, no, Quillet, because you get the bonus. Oh, you don't get the bonus from Sentry. You're too far. I'm far away, away. from Sentry. All right. It's well, in that far. case, anybody who failed, uh, you are affected by the slow spell. Um, ah. Right. The second golem pulses out a wave of magic. Uh, Fort Nova just tucked behind the pillar. It couldn't see to project the wave on, uh, but everybody else it did. So yeah, you are affected by slow. Uh, Johan, that's its whole action though. So. Fucking asshole. Okay. So, actual, <laughs> actual bonus action. Uh, half speed, can't use reactions. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going to just... Uh... <sighs> okay. Um, I'm going to do yeah, tidal wave right. again. I'm going to do tidal okay. wave again. Uh, I don't need to do it from in front of me. I can actually cast it. Um, from a point oh, anyway. to 120 feet. Oh, yeah. my apologies. Sure. Yeah, there's no hassle. Um, can I angle it in a way that I just hit these two, like without hitting Ayla? 
Is yes, like you could I angle it. Uh, you could do it sort of like this. So like down here. Like yeah. Ten foot yeah. Down there. I'll do that. Yeah, easy. I'll, I'll hit. I'll aim for those two then. Okay. Uh, sure. So tidal wave. Uh, oh crap! Damage. <laughs> But DC 17 for the two of them, please. And finally, well, the, the first stone golem, it's a natural 20 minus one is 19. So it does actually manage oh. to kind of keep its okay. feet implanted. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the zombie is a 15. So that one does fail. Um, but only okay, eight, so eight damage, eight damage and not prone. Well, that one um, actually was on one hit point from Ayla anyway. But yeah. Ah. And uh, it failed so the throw. So half, it damage, half damage on the giant. And Half six damage, damage okay. six lightning damage on each of the giants uh, for Heart of the Storm. Sure. The two golems take the lightning damage, no problem. And then the the last remaining uh, Valkyrian soldier is bl like blasted down the end of the temple by this surge of wave of water that just nice. washes him down past the pillars, um, eliminating him entirely. You can make a wisdom saving throw, Johan, at the end of your turn. Oh. Uh, 11. You nope. are still slow. <laughs> Lucius Vivian Eloin Elenesto. Uh, I think Lucius is going to start backing away. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you want to disengage? Because oh. the golem is next to you. Yes. Okay, so action, disengage, and then move. I've got a weird map situation going on here. So could you move me sure. down there? Mm-hmm. And he's essentially going to put his arm up against the pillar for support mm -hmm. and just rip hold of his chest with his other hand. And Try and breathe. Hem hyperventilating right now and trying to get uh, catch sure. his breath. Yeah, I think that uh, disengaging, you kind of managed to make your way back there and you're just like, yeah, trying to like control that breathing and get it under control. Um, so I'll have you make a, a save at the start of my next turn. As a bonus sure. action, he's going to protect himself with barrier ring. So he's going to activate that nice. sweet yeah perfect what he's doing okay uh i'll see if this one slow recharges it does not so it will make two slam attacks against ayla probably uh this last golem uh that's 19 to hit ayla um go on yes somebody's gonna say something uh, wisdom saving throw on lucius uh yeah did lucius, lucius fail i didn't lucius fail. succeeded he's not affected oh sorry Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, 19 to hit Ayla. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, that, is that a hit? Yeah. I can't remember your AC. Yeah, that is. And then the next okay. one's 13, so that one misses. Um, and you take uh, 7, 14, 20 bludgeoning damage. Uh, so halved to 10 because you're raging. And then the second fist comes slamming into the stone ground, kicking up dust and uh, debris, but the first one slams into you quite powerfully. Uh, Nova Vija. Top around. Um, will I have seen Lucius kind of looking a bit funny oh, as he walked past? Him. As he... Yeah, I think you saw him like clutching his chest and moving behind you, yeah, but like into the pillars behind you, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm going to back up and join him mm -hmm. and just stand, mm, actually stand in front of him and um, kind of, I'm just going to back up, shoot a glance at him, go, are you okay? And then as I wait, I'm just going to take a stance where I've got the shield in front of me so that, this is more in terms of RP, but if anything mm -hmm. comes my way, it's almost like the sh I'm, I'm blocking him with the shield yeah. and my body. It would, um, it would be very hard for then... a creature to strike at Lucius with you stood there, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then I would like to three beam Eldritch Blast uh, the stone golem in front of Ayla. Oh, right, okay. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, just while waiting, see, you know, vibe check. Um, first beam is a 10 plus 9, 19. Hits. Uh, 10 points of uh, Eldritch Blast damage, force damage. <laughs> Slammed into it. Second is an 11 plus 9, 20. Hits. Uh, I rolled another 5, so that's another 10 points of force damage. Uh, 15, I rolled a See, like, 15, chunks of it so blown 24. Off. Hits. 24, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 points of damage. 
all three beams collide into the creature, kind of stum making it kind of stumble, and pieces of it are being blown off as each one strikes. Um, but yeah, it just shows no sign of stopping or slowing. It just continues acting in its way. You can see that its eyes are crackling with this, yeah, almost a, such a deep blue, it's almost purple lightning as it does so. Uh, Quillic and Kalar. Cool. Um, can I do a bonus... Oh, God, I've got slow. I figured this out wrong. Um, I'll do a bonus action heal on myself, which... Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it'll be first level. Oh, I fucked this. Oh. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a guiding bolt and just a guiding bolt on the uh, right-hand uh, golem. Sure. Um, so, yep, the one next to Ayla. Yeah, so plus nine to hit. Here we go. 24 and nice. 16 Radiant Damage. Slams into the, the golden light, spills over the golem, highlighting uh, its body, making it easier to strike next time. Yeah, slams into it. Pieces of it break yeah, off. Um, but... I feel like anytime anything happens with Lucius, like in a panicky sense, is that also the exact same time when like a tidal wave wipes away a zombie and I'm too focused <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, Ayla, uh, wisdom saving throw at the end of your turn, Quill, because you are slowed. Oh, I will yes, hit... Uh... Oh, yeah, you take your go. Yeah, you pass. You, you're out of the slow, Quill. Oh, perfect. I will hit the one in front of me once, but with advantage from Guiding Bolt. Yep. <laughs> oh, I almost a crit. That was a 19 plus 12 to hit. Ah, bums. Still? Bums. Yeah, it's a hit. Um... Uh, 19 damage and a dex save. A dex save. Uh, that's a 10. That's a 10. That's uh, a 10. Six, eight, uh, 9 lightning damage. <laughs> 9 lights, points of lightning damage? Yeah. This one, it actually causes the creature to like buckle to the knee for a moment as you slam the hammer, even though slowed as you are, just your immense strength bears it to one knee and lightning arcs up through its body and you kind of see it almost react for the first time in pain um, as and it deals I with the blow. And I rolled a 21 with Sentry's aura on my saving throw. You don't get Sentry. Uh, yes, you do actually. You're in 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, you uh, succeed well, on the Well, without the slope it, I'm an 18. No, no, you, you, yeah, so either way you still, but you are still in the range. I, I thought you were further away. Yeah, so the slow effect wears off. She you feel your body it. kind of speed back up. She uh, was wise for what? Sentry. So wise. Okay, I'm going to attack the one that Ayla just hit. And sure. go for that. Yeah, it's right behind you, so... 18 plus 9 to hit. That's a hit. So that's 27 total. So let's do... I'm going to do a level 1 Divine Smite again, so that'll be 3d8 total. So, 13 damage, plus 5, 18, plus a d4. 59, 21 damage. 21 points of damage. Uh, very good. This one, as Her Majesty's Road sinks into the creature, you actually tear at some of the stone, the magic blade, carving through it. And yeah, you see another big chunk of the creature fall off. It kind of staggers to one arm, just manages to right itself again. But it's, yeah, definitely taking a beating. And I'll do it again, see if you play. See if you play. 19 plus 9. So that's yeah. cool beans. I'll do the same again with the level uh, one divine smite. Go for it. So 3d8, 17, plus 5, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, plus a d4, 26 damage. Second strike carves through, almost tearing one of its arms off, but it still leaves this, you know, enough there that it can still move it. But yeah, this thing is nearly on its way out. You can see that it's falling apart, pieces of it are breaking off, it's barely able to keep standing. Um, anything else? Sentry. Uh, I'm just going to stay there. I, I think she would have cast an eye to see Lucius move because he was right next to her. But seeing mm -hmm. like Nova going to sit, going to see how he's doing. Sure. She's a. Uh, she's all good. So yeah, that's. Okay. The one on your other side, Sentry, on your uh, on your left side next to you and Johan is going to make two attacks: one against Johan, one against you, Sentry. Uh, Can Johan. I take Johan on the first one. Uh, you can. You have your reaction. Uh, the lowest I got there is a 22, Johan. That hits. <laughs> that, that, that'll Christ. do it. Yeah. And then oh, Sentry, mm. that was a natural 20 for a 30 total. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Whoa. Beautiful. All right, I'll do the damage against Johan first. Uh, that is going to be guys. 8, 10, 16 bludgeoning damage, Johan. Okay. 24, 30. 
46 bludgeoning damage, Sentry, as this thing's fist, as you reach over to protect Johan, its second fist just comes up, uppercuts you, slams you against the pillar, and you're just like, ugh, psh, you break against it psh, as you slam back down to the ground. Crikey. Nice. Uh, Johan. <laughs> Your turn. Is it it's the one on the right this is that looks a lot messier, doesn't it? Yes, uh, the, the one, one next to Ayla on your, your right hand side, yes. It looks that thing looks like it's about to fall apart. You've All seen right, them take uh, damage at this point. It, you, you know, as a just in case you're worried about resistances, they haven't had resistance yeah, to yeah, damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh Reese face. <laughs> that was a lot of damage. <laughs> that was a lot of damage. It's those crits when they go back on you guys, they're yeah. like Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Oh god. Do. Yeah. Okay. It's true. How the uh, turntables. <laughs> Give it to I'm you, Rams. Just, I'm just going to lightning bolt this one right next to me, then the one that slowed me. Uh, just a third level lightning bolt. It's um, the one that just hit you in Sentry, you mean? The one on your left yeah, side? Yeah, or the, the, one on my left, the one on my left hand side. They'll just shoot a sure. lightning bolt just a third level down the corridor. I mean, it fails. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, th these are not very quick creatures. Yeah. Um, 26 damage and 6 damage to the two of them from Heart of the Storm. Yeah, so the lightning bolt strikes against the golem, sends lightning arcing up and down its body. This one looks, you know, almost pristine compared to the other one. Um, the other one, the lightning strikes into it, causes a few more pieces of stone to fall off, but still just about standing. Um, anything else, Johan? You've got, when you cast a spell, you get to do your movement? Uh, I can't. That's a bonus action to do Tempestuous Magic to float away. And so. you are slowed. Well, and wisdom saving throw at the end yeah. of your turn. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nine, yeah. Nine times. Lucius. Yeah. Um, I'll look up at Nova, um, kind of take a deep breath, and be like, I I'm okay. Uh, let's focus. And I'll spin around. The yeah, you feel pillar. like that pain still there but it's not as bad like it subsides for a moment <laughs> i want to go uh why does it corner. let you do that i don't know it's moving the whole map um yeah, I'll... can i cast hypnotic pattern uh it's 30 foot um cube over the range okay. of 120 feet um they have to make a wisdom saving throw or uh, as you cast the spell neither creature is affected because they are immune to being charmed it's, uh, it's a charm. It's a charm effect, right? If I remember. I got, I'm, I'm not fully uh, aware, so that was no. But I'm just, just checking because the wording on the spell matters. Like, does the spell say that they become charmed? Yes. Yeah. So it has no effect. You watch as this colorful pattern kind of like totally illuminates around them. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Look, you you did what you thought was the right thing to do, and that's you role playing your character. Um, that was all RP. Yeah, you yep. conjure the pattern, and they just, the golems seem unaffected by it. They don't even seem to notice the colors and things in the air um, as they do so. Yep. Uh, all right, I'm going to make this last golem's attacks, and then we're going to take a short break. Uh, huh. It can't really get anywhere. Hmm, Ayla's been hitting it a lot as well. It's going to make a last-ditch effort to try and hit Ayla uh, with two attacks. Uh, a three and a one. Woof, woof, as Ayla just whoosh, dodges to the side. It slams one fist into a pillar as Ayla rolls under it, and then the hammer comes to up, misses both attacks. Um, and we are going to take a short break right there, uh, and we'll finish off this battle after the break. Uh, nice. Wow. Very nice. Nice. Um, Great. Yeah, we'll up. Um, yeah, we're going to read out some donos and stuff like that. If people need to go grab a drinky, go grab a drinky. Um, and that's it. Uh, yeah, cool. Nice. Uh, did want to give awesome. a shout out as well. We have a couple of new mods in chat as well. Uh, it's 39 hey. salty cookies. I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Salty, <laughs> yeah. Salty cookies. Not slutty and cookies. Salty cookies. Salty, <laughs> cookies. salty cookies. And Visti as well. Um, and thank you, Nightjar and Dunny, for recommending those guys to us. Uh, thank you for helping us mod the channel. So thank you very much. Uh, Tommy Boy, you. have you got some things yep. to read? Perfect. I will read them out. But yes, indeed, if you see those names in chat, give them the respect they deserve. They're keeping this place <laughs> safe and sane. Uh, away from Ban all the everyone, pack guys. Um, <laughs> ban everyone and ban them all uh we have a donation from brian indigo it is a quarter hundo 
Palms is sweaty, knees weak, arms is heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. A spoonful of instant coffee can take the acidic taste out of mum's spaghetti. Thanks, Brian Indigo. <laughs> um, Keishi with a full hundo. Thank you very much. Take my money. Uh, he he, rags best girl. Rags underscore. There you go. That's me. That's me. <laughs> That's you, rags. Uh, Mr. Altissimo with another hundo. Holy shit. Hey, all. Uh, my birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Mr. Altissimo. Hit the big 3-0. Uh, wanted to share the love and send something to you. Also, love Mark's scare from the Phasmophobia stream a while back. I didn't. Um, hope to see some more what? chaos. I don't remember that. Your scare in Phasmophobia what? when you jumped into the Discord. Oh, no. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Um, well, thank you very much, Mr. Artismo, and happy birthday also. Um, Max the Menace with a quarter hundo. I don't donate often, but I want to say this. I don't get feels from a lot of stuff, but the previous two made me feel feels. You guys are awesome, and I'm excited to watch every Sunday. By the way, Trot, I love the sponsored bits. The effort is certainly noted. Yeah, Who yeah, doesn't? puts a ton of effort into them. Um, Mura Sax Madeline? Mura Sax? Mura Sax Madeline, I'll go with that. I finally caught up after almost a year and the only thing that has been on my mind all this time is will they ever get that Wyvern armor they sent to Gold Throne? Much love. No. Well, if the Wyvern armor is medium or above, I don't want it anymore. Um, <laughs> Mere Kitty. Uh, missed you guys as I uh, haven't watched live since around March. Finally got a job now. Congratulations. So we'll be back to donating again. Love you all. Thanks for the joy you give. Well, thank you very much and welcome back, Mere Kitty. Um, my thotics or my totics? <laughs> I'm going to go with my thotics. Um, with a quarter hundo, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Mark. I've been DMing for four to five years, but I have always been afraid to write my own campaign. However, your work with Aroas has inspired me to finally start writing and making my own world. Thank you all for what you do. Well, wow. thank you. There you go, Mark. Here's um, the thing you'll quickly find out that. It, you make mistakes all the time. Like it's you just you just make it up, and then if something's not good, you you change it, and if it's good, you keep doing it. That's it. That's the secret. It's my secret gap. I always make mistakes. Yeah, just um, make all the mistakes. Nightjar with Razzy Boy. So lovely to see you back on High Rollers. Betray the party, and we're having words. God, there you go. The wrath of Nightjar. Uh, yeah, Ghost Rams. in Progress with a quarter hundo. Yep, Rams. Uh, Ghost in Progress. Don't betray the party. <laughs> <laughs> quarter hundo from Ghost in Progress. Started up the podcast as something to listen to while working, not realizing I would fall in love with an anxious bird, a chaotic bi babe, robo mum, squishy elf, red redhead that could crush me, and every gay NPC ever. Wow, I love this game. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. That's 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 <laughs> us. You got us. You got him. Um, thank you very much. And Graying Badger with a half hundo, but no message. Well, thanks, thank Graying Badger. Thank you. Um, is we everybody back? I'll do a quick refresh because there's a few you more. To, well, you need to go get a drinky as well. I think, like, yeah, if you want to shoot off now, Tom, and then once everyone's back, if Trot's there, he can I'm switch still to... still on this camera. Oh, there, there we go. go. Oh, he was dealing with oh, a, thanks, a dog. Jesus, doggy! Doggy! Yeah, he's like, yeah, I will go get, a, go get a drink. See you in a bit. Nice. Precious boy. Sweet tax drop. When did you get those? Precious oh, boy, man. Yeah, did you get those this weekend? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Got it all done. Yeah. Hello. Nice. Sweet ink. Hello. Still really Sorry, awesome. Tommy's just going to grab a drink and a, a wee toilet break. Oh, um, okie doke. Excellent. Okie doke. Perfect. 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 Uh, any other messages that we need to quickly read out? I'll just check the old uh, Discord staff a room. Uh, because... Yeah, there is stuff in Discord. Oh, you're on it. Go on, Kim. Um, thank you for the gift subs from Nirachid. Nirashed. Narok. One way. I'll get it right. Narok. Um, that person. Yeah. Uh, Mia Hell. Kayash, uh, Keishi. Why am the dyslexic person? Randomer Kit. <laughs> 
Cooper Orc, the Bard's <laughs> the Bard's Cod piece. I got that one right. Nice. Uh, and Chris <laughs> JK3. Um, we also have a donation from Olo Renve, but no message. And apparently, someone's also uh, donated to ask about modded Minecraft, but uh, Nightjar <laughs> hasn't pasted the whole message. She's just yeah, put Rams, like, a I guess, more, um, more Rams is. Uh, I don't. These I, days. I'm clueless. I'm. Yeah, I'm part of that you stuff, but now. I yeah. do them, but I never understand them. I just, I'm just the pretty face. Um, oh, that everyone yeah, talks that's, about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's what you're brought in for. They're like, look, yeah, we've sure. got all the smart guys. We've got Ben. We've got Duncan and all that. What we need is a, uh, we need a pretty face in to just pull in all yeah. the, the young twitchers and the Big memers views. and the zoomers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's zoom that's king. The move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, once Tommy Boy gets back, uh, we will jump on. Just a quick message just to say once again, thank you, D&D Beyond, uh, for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget, you can go to the link. It's in chat. It's dndbeyond.com for uh, dot link. dndbeyond.link forward slash HR monster. Uh, and that supports yeah. us. And it's a big discount on a bunch of stuff. There's our monster. <laughs> so what a cute little just monster. so confused. Like, what are you doing, really Father? Why have you done this? Why are you right. pushing me up against this thing? We've got Tommy Boy back. Hello. And it's the top of a brand new combat round. Quick recap. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a quick break. Uh, so, the party is currently in the first chamber in the Temple of Hesper. Having arrived, they noticed several bodies belonging to Valkyrian soldiers, as well as the body of a Sphinx. However, just as they begin investigating, Power surges through the temple, lightning courses through the walls and the floor, sealing the doors shut and bringing to life two stone golems and a selection of undead creatures. The undead creatures have been dispatched, but the two golems continue their attacks on the party. And we go to the top of the round with Nova Vija. Yeah. You know, all of my spells work on I mean, things that have a pulse, so... And then it will be Quill and then um... Ayla. I'm going to do the triple blast again against Golem on the right. I mean, um, it does a lot of damage. So, yeah. uh, first attack. Oh, let me get my stats up. Uh, 15 plus 9 is 24. Uh, 5, That's 6, 7, 8 points of force damage. One blast uh, slams into it. Rolled a 15 again. Uh, so 24 again uh, to hit. And 10 points of force damage. This creature is now. Natural twenty. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. It had three hit points left. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you can roll the damage if you want. Ten plus a d10. Hell yeah! Uh, can... But it Early is three hit points left. Could I? So. Three hit points. So what, it did, was that on the second beam or the third? That was beam? the third beam. You rolled the crit on the third beam. beam. No, because yeah, yeah, well, yeah. unless you want to leave oh, this creature okay. alive. No, 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 no. I thought you meant that... Ne never mind. It's dead. No, yeah, Blow it it's, up. Tell uh, me how it dies. First beam, second beam, and then on the third beam, the beam kind of strikes into what remains of its chest, and it just crumbles to pieces um, as it falls to the ground and is animate no longer uh, as that third awesome. and final uh, strike eliminates it. Awesome. Whoopsie. Uh, I'm going to go scooch around and uh, just scooch my little butt in front of Lucius again. Sure. Okay. Quillic and Kalar. Uh, right. I want to dip behind Ayla. Uh, we're we're not. Is it just Johan that's affected by slow now? Yeah. Okay. In that case, I will do yeah, a. Yeah, I'll do a sacred flame on the Titan boy, so he needs to do a Dex save of seventeen. Ha! <laughs> uh, I roll eighteen minus one, seventeen. This giant this stone golem <laughs> leaps out of the way. Oh. Uh, and I will do a... I'm trying to figure out what level this slow would be. So I'll do a third level uh, healing word. Sure about that? On... Sure third? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's see. Either way, you get 3d4. Plus five, so you get healed for, wow, 11. Um, 11 hit points, Johan, and you are no longer slowed. Ah, oh, oh. thank God. 
Oh, that case, but yeah. <laughs> you feel your body kind of return to its natural speed as the, the magic of Quill's uh, divine magic heals your wounds and restores your energy. Nice. Speed uh, you up. Anything too. else, Quill? Uh, that's everything. If not, Ayla. I'm going to uh, move up to. Uh, can I hit him from here? Yeah, the pillar kind of is rounded, yeah. and so there's enough space between the pillar and sentry yeah. that you can step forward and strike. Yes, it can strike you though without penalty. So, sure. Um, so twenty-two to hit, and uh, twenty-four to hit. So two hits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are not paying attention, were you? <laughs> um, I know I was, but uh, yeah, I was momentarily distracted, but I know you roll well above uh, its AC, okay. so. Um, it, sorry about uh, the, the sirens there. Um, no, that's right, just buddy. the whack brigade coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We got a whack in. He's rolling too high. <laughs> Somebody stop 19... him. <laughs> 19 damage on the first hammer. I'm just and... slammed in. Ripping chunks uh, of the stone I've golem out. That uh, Ooh, that's not as good. Twelve on the second hammer and a dex save. Both hammers come slamming in. Uh, Seventeen minus one is sixteen. Ah, uh, just saves. I can only um, roll high on fucking dex saving throws for these things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, well, crit, seven is cool, so half of seven. Half for of lightning seven. Damage. Uh, so three points of lightning damage. <laughs> You see the lightning kind of crackles over its surface, but the creature is still standing. Um, perfect. After that, sentry. Unless there's anything else, Ayla? No. 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 Sentry. Cool. I'm going to carry on smacking this dude. See who we play? 13 plus 9 to hit for the first one. Uh, 13 plus 9, 22. Yeah, that will hit. 22. Nice, nice, nice. And then I will do the uh, level 1 Divine Smite again. So okay. 3d8. 17 plus 5. 18, 19, 20, 20, 22 plus a d4. 24 on the first hit. Majesty's Rose, between you and Ailey, you're just like carving chunks out of this one. You know, where Nova had been blasting chunks with Ailey, Eldritch Blast out of the previous one, you and Ayla are just now tearing into the stone of this. Uh, Nice. And then I will do it again. Oh, that's a nine. Ooh. No, no, nine. This no, time. Three, nine, Twelve to hit. Yeah. No, this time it manages to just kind of parry it with this kind of stone staff it's carrying. <laughs> Blocks your strike. Okay. And as a bonus action, can I cast... Uh... Oh, wait. No, I can't do it because I've used up all my spell slots. No, I have <laughs> prepared badly for really? this. I was too busy fighting. I've used up you, all my if level you have spell level slots. Spell if, you've ha if you have higher level spell slots, you can still use them to cast a lower level spell. Yeah, um, I was going to cast Shield of Faith on Johan, but I can only cast it at level 1. You can cast it with a second level slot, it just doesn't get any can additional you? benefit. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh. It just, just, it's uh, a bit tricky, but it just doesn't get a bonus benefit. So you can still so use it, will... but it just won't help. Yeah, I'll cast uh, yeah, Shield of Faith on Johan and give him a plus 2 to his AC. Plus Yay. 2 to AC for Johan. Thank you. Uh, Oof, yeah, and I think that this, uh, let's see if it's slow comes back. It does not. Uh, so it's going to make two slam attacks, and yeah, it's going to target Ayla and Sentry, the two biggest damage dealers, which it sees as the biggest threat. So, Ayla. Can I protect Ayla? <laughs> it's a good job you've it said is. that before I said what I rolled, because that was another natural 20. Oh. Uh, <laughs> my, my second roll is a two. So that's a 12 oh. total to hit Ayla. <laughs> so Thank it's you. about to, like, <laughs> slam Ayla, just like bring this massive stone staff down her head and then you manage to like knock the staff aside with your shield as it just slams awesome. into the pillar instead. Um, and then the one against you, Sentry, it's 19 plus 10, 29. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Yeah, now now it's like, now it's good time rolling. So, yeah. uh, 10, 16, uh, that is gonna be 22 points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> it's second strike takes you uh, as you're protecting Ayla, slams into the side of you. Um, Understandable. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna like place a hand on my chest, take a deep breath in, and cast um, Dragon's Breath on myself. 
Ah, cool. Um, nice. You get to breathe in the same turn as well, by the way. Uh, yeah, so that's my bonus action. Uh, so then I'm going to shoot this thing with a 15-foot cone of acid damage. Oh, you're going to uh, do acid, are you? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so what's the save on that? That's a... 15 deck saves. DC 17. 15, minus 1, 14. <laughs> so, oh, uh, and then go 16, 16 acid, damage. acid damage. Yeah, and it's also 6. Of damage. Yeah, yeah. Next. And, uh, and 6, six more lightning. lightning damage from Heart of the Storm. So the acid kind of erupts uh, forward, coating the creature, and you can see it's beginning to pit away at the granite and stone. And then another blast of lightning just comes from around you. The clouds and mist that have gathered around you just blast it. Still staggers back, still still functional, but uh, badly damaged. Lucius. Um, Lucius is going to move up with Ola. Uh, Ola? <laughs> Ola, yep, good old Ola. Nova, <laughs> next to Nova. <laughs> And he looks a little bit uh, vacant. However, he's going to continue to attack. Uh, sure. But he's going to resort to spells he doesn't usually use. So Melf's Acid Arrow, which hasn't done in a long okay. time. Uh, he's going to attack the statue with that. So it's just a straight for it. hit, which is a 19 to hit. Just manages to hit, actually. The, the acid kind of like slams into its back uh, for a small little bit. Is that nine acid damage? Nine and on this think, turn, four next turn. Four next turn. Yep, perfect. At the start of its turn. So the acid kind of sprays against its back, kind of where Johan has coated the front of the creature. You're now kind of coating the back of it in this pitting orange liquid. Uh, and then Dichromancy? Yes, please. So that's six points extra. Six points extra. <laughs> Just kind of, yeah, covering it from both sides, this thing now being surrounded. But it shows no sign of wanting to retreat or fear. It just continues fighting as if driven by some invisible force. Um, anything else, Lucius? If not, Nova. That's it for me. Thanks. Nova, Quillick, then Ayla. Uh, can I blast this guy from where I'm standing, or do I need to like pop out a little bit more? No, I'd say because Lucius just did a Melsa acid arrow. Like You can kind of lean to the side and do it easily enough. Okay. And so distracted by uh, the three warriors anyway, so three fighters in front of it. Yeah. I'm just gonna, like, over my shoulder, just be like, Lucius, breathe with me. One, two, three, four, and kind of just count sort of methodically. Like, do a little ha happy little breathing exercise. And while I'm doing this breathing exercise, and I count one, two, three, three beans <laughs> are gonna come out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the first one is a, a seven plus... Where, why do I click off it every goddamn time? Uh, nine, so sixteen to hit. That does not hit. Uh, the blast actually does kind of hit. gets deflected off of it. Yep. Uh, much better on the second one. Fourteen plus nine is twenty-three to hit. That's it. Nine That's points of uh, force damage. <laughs> uh, and an eighteen Chunk plus nine, twenty. Twenty-seven, hits. and I rolled a six plus five is. 11 points of force damage. These two strikes, this one, kind of similar to when Ayla smashed the back of the knee of the previous stone golem, your blast strike into the back of its legs, causing it to buckle down onto one. You can see it kind of put one hand out to steady itself. This thing is about to fall apart. So, yeah, the two, all three, the two hitting strikes are rendering it badly, badly damaged. Anything else, Nova? I just want to ask Tom if he's proud of me doing all this math real quick. Like... Oh man, I am so impressed. You're the best. There you go. You're the best. And Tom, <laughs> turns out you're good. If it's if it's nines and fives, I can do it. <laughs> nines and fives, <laughs> man. That's all I can count with. That's insane. That's the hardest ones. Um, <clears throat> my, my question mark. Yeah. Dragon-like does Johan look when he does that spell? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look like a dragon at all. He just, like, he kind of takes a breath in and then he just... Magical acid. It's not like he's breathing real acid. It's like uh, when Lucius conjures acid. It's kind of a magical manifestation of it is is ejected. Dragon's Breath is a spell. It's it's a spell that is I done it. known. I've done it one of the last times yeah. I was here. Yeah. 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 Let's it's cast this before. a cool spell name. Okay. It is a cool it's spell name, isn't it? I think you're looking for things that... Uh, I think you're trying to look at things that aren't really there, Tom, to be honest. Uh, oh, well, 
You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. I'll be right about okay. it somehow. Um, sure. I want to do a uh, another sacred flame on this weirdly dexterous boy. Um, one minus 17. one is zero. Perfect. Three d eight plus five of damage to this one. Oh my god! Uh, Twenty two. Was it like your sacred flame? Is it the feathers? I can never remember which ones. Which one your spells? Uh, are. Uh, they all look like feathers in some way. It's like a kind of storm of, of light golden feathers, right? That you kind of whoosh, yeah, and explodes in, and... in a yeah, explodes in a burst of feathers. They kind of burn through this burst of feathers, burns through the creature's stone body as it just kind of the lightning dies in its eyes and its mouth, and it just <laughs> Ayla and Century. Century, you kind of have to yank Johan back as this thing falls towards you guys, and it just <laughs> slams into the ground. And that is you out of initiative. Ooh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, well, we did what. <laughs> the Starbane guys couldn't do, so that's good. Thanks, Hesper, by the way. Thanks for creating those. You hear a kind of whispering voice. Hesper did not create these. And a shimmering, translucent form uh, begins to appear over the corpse of the Sphinx. Uh, a spiritual, translucent, leonine body with a noble, regal, lion-like face, lioness face, and then a pair of curled wings begins to shimmer and appear. A spirit. The sink. Uh, I think Sentry would like get down on one knee after seeing it, like just bow like at this this, okay. this being. This powerful being. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Helios it seems to kind of react? nod its direction. Uh, Helios doesn't react, no. Um, he's a big lion dude. Now. Yeah, he, well, he, no, yeah, he appears a as a big lion dude to you guys. He is he is a a, a thing. He's an Eterna. <laughs> they take forms yeah, that they think but... you guys understand. <laughs> yeah. He's not actually a lion know. man. I yeah. know that, but... He just doesn't react. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> he's in, he's, yeah. he's cloaking. He's a cape at the minute. Uh, <laughs> he's yeah, cloaking. He's, uh, he's cloaking. This this figure just sort of seems to appear out of out of thin air um, and looks in your direction. It nods its head towards Sentry. Uh, I know that you are not like the ones who came before. I recognize a guardian, one that carries the power of the Prime, as do I also recognize a high priest of my own lord. And she nods her head in Quill's direction. She actually bows sort of on these spectral uh, paws in your direction, Quill. I'm so sorry for what happened here. Um, what happened here? <laughs> that is a vast question. This is a haven of questions. But I'm afraid that I must ask you to perhaps be a little more specific. Many events have transpired here. To which do you refer? How did you die? That is a question that even I am afraid I cannot fully answer. My memory of my death is hazy. It happened, it must have happened recently, though time has somewhat lost meaning to me. I remember only figures entering the temple, and the rest has become a blur, uh, as if peered through the a past... fog. In the past few weeks? Oh, most certainly. Although a week, I struggle to remember the exact nature of that time period. A week to you may feel like a year to me, or vice versa. I have been here a very long time. And you remember everything until recently, very easily. Until my death, I remember it well. The creatures that you fought against were in part created by the sickness that has taken over the temple, a sickness that has grown, a storm that has been brewing ever since the Valkyrian army was pushed from Aroas. Hesper tasked me to come here to recover an artifact, a spear. Do you know mm. where it's held? I do. 
I know. It is located within the inner sanctum. The spear that you speak of is part of another being. It is bonded to it. The spear was an heirloom of Hesper, an item created in conjunction with the creation of Siaska, the guardian of the skies of Aroes, the creature that was bound to this temple, the Tempest Dragon. The spear lies in the inner sanctum deep within the temple, the sanctum that has been sealed, the sanctum that the Tempest Dragon now slumbers in. It is plagued by nightmares, some spell cast by the Serpent Queen. Over the last 500 years, the Guardian's dreams have manifested in arcane power, creating the storms that have ravaged this land. They are building. The dragon has been afflicted by a spell, but does it carry the sickness? That the, the is spell. It the same thing. It is yes. Okay. So not the spell dark. creates. In the guardian's dreams, it creates nightmares. It ravages its mind, and in doing so. The Tempest's primordial nature has manifested in these great and powerful storms, but it has become twisted by fear, hate, anger, the negative emotions that we often so repress. They are now manifesting, making it violent, aggressive. How do we free the dragon from the nightmare? I'm afraid that I do not know. I suspect that this is why the High Priest has been sent to fix that which even Hesper could not. Forgive me. Introductions. My name is Zuhemi. I am one of two guardian sphinxes of this shrine. It was once my duty to welcome pilgrims, to offer them wisdom, to help them solve their problems, or to grant them knowledge, teach magic. But sadly... She kind of lit, drifts her eyes, her spiritual eyes, down to her body. It seems that my time here has come to an end. But my service is still undone. My spirit lingers. What can be done to release your spirit? I suspect that once the Guardian is freed of this spell, this nightmare, there will be no longer a reason for me to protect the, sh the sanctum. Hesper will be able to call me, my spirit, back up in beyond the cradle. Can you guide us to the spear? I can offer you only this. The spear is located in the sanctum, to reach which you will need to gain access to the wings of set the winds of ascension as well as complete a set of trials that will prove you have mastered Hesper's domains. My mate, Kuratas, is one of these trials. I fear that he will not show you the same kindness that I do. To begin your ascension and face the trials of the Tempest, you will need to bless yourself in the winds of knowledge, then kneel before your greatest enemy and tell them what they must hear. This is the only guidance I can give you, for you must prove you are a master of Hesper's domains. Bless so, the wounds of knowledge. Just cast and bless, kneel, kneel before Starbane, unlocks the door. Before I mean, <laughs> where's Starbane? <laughs> Up. <laughs> up there. <laughs> That's how great it's done. Up there. Um, up Sentry, there. Yeah. Anything from you guys? Mm -hmm. Ayla? Anything from you guys? Um, while this is happening, um, mm -hmm. just back there uh, with mm -hmm. the pillar, it's just uh, imagery while it's happening. Sure. Uh, Lucius just back up against the, uh, the pillar, kind of getting his breath back, also nodding to Nova yeah. and soaking in the... Uh, 
conversations going on. Sure, yeah, yeah. Like it takes a bit of time, but the pain in your chest does begin to subside with Nova sort of talking to you and the and the breathing and the counting. Um, but yeah, it was like a like an intense pain, like you you were suffocating again. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, sure. I'll be counting again with Lucius, I guess. Yeah, actually, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, be sure. talking. I would have been just like counting with Lucius, trying to distract him, ask him dumb questions. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, Zuhemi, uh, the spirit, she kind of makes her way. Uh, I'll use her token for now. Um, she just kind of makes her way to the center of the temple and just kind of sits back on her back paws, stands very regally and proudly, her wings folded behind her, um, just as if waiting. Uh, Bless yourself this is where... for your greatest enemy. I am happy to repeat the message if you need me to repeat it. I am not here to trick you, merely to test you. This, this is where I am so disconnected from Quill. He is so wise. And I, so dumb. <laughs> you can always ask me. You can always be like, Mark, can I make a check? Like, give me give me a clue here, buddy. Like, can I make a check to get a clue? <laughs> but is Johan Dragon Man? That's, <laughs> that's where Tom no. Wisdom comes in. <laughs> I mean, he, I mean you can, yeah, I mean... If that's what someone thinks, he's, I mean, you've seen him use this magic before. Like, he doesn't have any scales. He doesn't yeah. have any, like, mm. wings. I don't know what I you want from I am a crazy me. conspiracy theorist compared to Quill's massive wisdom. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, can I make a check? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. What do you want to know? Like, what's the, what's the, what's the angle here? Like, you need to give me something, and I'll, I can give you clues around stuff, but you can't just roll for want... answer. Uh, I would like to roll the luck skill. Uh, no, nope. I, I, can I can I try and deepen my connection with Hesper to see if I can hear his guidance in this trying sure. time? I mean, that sounds like a divine intervention that you want to use to me. <laughs> nah. If you would like to cast the commune spell, you can cast the commune spell. They, when I say, like, get a hint, I mean, like... Uh, is there anything in the teachings of Hesper I can think of that might relate to this? Is there, you know, can I yeah. make an insight check to see if I can pick up on what she's, what the the Sphinx is implying? You know, that's the kind of thing. Well, like, like the Sphinx is saying it, but I can see their eyes are kind of like, I don't know, it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can infer <laughs> the things, right? Um, you might be able to, you know, figure out that there's certain elements that have got more meaning behind them. Sure. Is that so insight for that one? Sure, insight, yeah. 19. 19, okay. There's a couple of things. I mean, uh, you don't. You, you were never formally taught as a priest of Hesper, so things like the Trial of the Tempest, the Winds of Ascension, like none of that means anything to you. But you can pick up on the way that she speaks, and it's very similar to the way that Hesper often speaks, where there is clearly more meaning to it's not just literally her words like when she says things like kneel before your greatest enemy she doesn't mean starbane or an actual enemy there will be some sort of you know uh you know uh what's the word i'm thinking of the metaphor Meta metaphor mer metaphorical enemy that she that, that she means likewise um bless yourself in the winds of knowledge you don't think that there's... That could be a, perhaps a little bit more literal. You get from her meaning that there is probably some sort of blessing that you can receive that will show that you're worthy. Um, and it's probably somewhere here in the temple that you can achieve that. I'm thinking about the uh, the fountain with holes that I felt a small breeze from. Uh, yeah. Johan, anything? What was the I saw you kind of make I'm a noise. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at my... Uh... Okay, I'm going to use my storm guide, uh, which lets me control the weather around me, and I'm going to see if I can, like, make the wind that's blowing out of these little holes, if I can, like, lift it up and, like, ah. make it gust, gust okay. out. I will say, so, 
you try to do this. You kind of stand by the, the stone basin with these holes and you try and kind of conjure the air to make it stronger. But something is blocking. Like you feel that whatever these tiny holes are connected to, um, it's either blocked or it's closed and not enough air is getting in for you to really create a draft or like make the wind stronger. Um, there might be some sort of mechanism or like something that can open up the channels that it's clearly getting, it is air. You can tell that it's fresh air coming from somewhere there's it there's not enough of it like it needs to be opened somehow and the statue that's on top of this thing is it's holding a spear and a book right uh yes the big and that, it's a bit further back like the stone basin is in the very middle of oh. the temple the statue of hesper is further back with a golden disc in front of him like a big 10 foot diameter golden disc on the floor and then a similar one set into the ceiling but the statue of hesper is at the back of the room uh with yeah the, the staff and a book open uh uh, there are some exits from this room as well. There is like corridors leading east and west. Um, it is not just this one room. Uh... What's okay. the third uh, line of the after the kneel before your greatest enemy and tell them? Tell them what they need to hear was the line. Thank you. Mm -hmm. can, I, uh, can I get changed? <laughs> Into my yes. slightly less heavy armor. Do you have less heavy armor on you? I do. I have. I have studded leather armor. It's light armor, sure. not. Uh... Yeah, you can equip that. I, I want to equip your old armor. Yeah, sure. Whilst uh, <laughs> the fate of the Stormlands, uh, the fight fate of Mirskir, who gets changed? Uh, Hang on. She's getting Nicky. <laughs> she's getting Nicky. Uh, sure. Lucius says to Nova, maybe we could. Um... Look down one of these other exits to see if there's any anything else that we might have yeah. missed. Let's do that. I mean, Johan says that the basin's blocked somehow, so I'm guessing we probably have to unblock it. Yeah, Love me. Maybe. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Simple plumbing uh, problem. <laughs> I'll head off down the left exit then way so this one over here sure so uh you and nova are going to start making your way down that corridor Oops. sure uh okay well nova and lucius head off anything from anybody else ayla um, century uh... yeah your hand could i try go into the center of this disc this circle mm -hmm. and kneel before a hesper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, what would I say tell them what they need to hear no I can't I, I can't can I, oh, is, there, is there something I could do to, oh, I'm trying to think like make a just make a religion check so uh, religion skill check could be worse Okay, 16. <clears throat> As you reel down, the statue of Hesper isn't looking down, it's looking up. It's actually looking up at the golden disc set into the, the ceiling. You can feel the cool gold metal beneath you. There's a connection here. First of all, this isn't a, tar this isn't a test for you. This is a test of the one that was guided here. The one that you came to support. You hmm. think that... Hmm, there is an old saying. Maybe it's something that Johan heard once on a fishing boat. Or maybe it's something that you just picked up in passing. Maybe a priest of Hesper mentioned it once. And it just something about it kind of bring, reminds it in, in your mind. Uh, Hesper is a god of magic, but also a god of knowledge and the sky. Something like, bless yourself in the winds of knowledge. I mean, it could be literal. It could be, you know, find air to, to bless you with. It could also mean, you know, books. It could be a certain thing that you need to learn or understand um, around here. Maybe there's a library. <clears throat> Hesper's also really connected to the four winds. There's generally people always talk about the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, the west wind. Something about, like, being set into the mountains here... It's the kind of place where you could maybe 
somebody who is very clever could maybe arc it, like build some sort of system to funnel the winds down into the temple somehow. There might be somewhere here that could, uh, you know, you maybe use for like a prayer purpose or something. Like, you know, funnel the winds in to create like a an effect or something like that. Maybe. Okay. Um, I'll go. I'll head. I'll stand up after a minute and head over to Quill. Okay. And uh, I'm going to say, I think that this task befalls to you. Hesper's not my greatest enemy. Out. Not by a long no, shot. But... Oh. I don't know. I, I knelt down and I felt that, well, I pray to Hesper that this is, this is not my... Not my battle. Not my... Not my problem to solve. What I'm saying is I have no idea. <laughs> I I hear you. I hear you. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, so Quill, Sentry, Ayla, what are you guys doing? Just while um, like Lucius mm -hmm. and Ovi go off, so I know to is describe it. Um, is it the storm, Quill? Like, lightning? Is lightning your biggest enemy? Because I feel like... I don't really think anyone else should be hit by lightning today, but, um, you know, it's not the best for, for you. Just, uh... What? If, it, if it's lightning, then what the... What do I say to lightning? I'm terrified. I, I, I You destroyed me. You took everything away from me. Like, what do I tell lightning? Hesper found me because of you. My life was torn to pieces because of you. And now I walk this world because of Hesper's teachings when I didn't deserve it. I should have been dead. Is that what I tell Lightning? Is Lightning my biggest enemy? Well, it's just Is it echoed. Hesper? Big chamber. Sentry. <laughs> Anything? Um, cool. I, think, I think Sentry's going to start making her way towards this corridor here and okay. walk down that way peering down that way. So Nova and Lucius, as you guys making your way down the uh, left-hand corridor, it splits into two. It carries on straight ahead, um, but then it turns uh, to your right, so heading sort of north. Um, and you can see that's a short corridor. And it, Nova, you notice it because you can see the telltale signs of uh, library stacks. Um, uh, you can see worn, very ruined books amongst it. Um, ahead of you, there is a door. It is a it is a stone door. It does look like it opens, um, but it's set into the wall dead ahead of you. Um, those are the only two places you can go. Uh, what do you think, Lucius? I'm... Shall we go on or turn around, go back, or should we go look at the books? I look at Nova like a... with a... Come on. There's a library there, and you're asking me if you want to... <laughs> You can go and look at the library. There could be valuable information. You want to come with me? Come on. I'll come with you, yes. Yeah, okay. You guys make your way down the short corridor. Um, who's out in front? Probably me. Okay. Of them. <laughs> the first one to enter the library. It's kind of... It's very tragic to Nova. This would have been a beautiful library once wooden beautifully carved wooden library stacks stone pillars reading tables uh, magical kind of dim glowing lights hover above casting just enough light to read by um, without being too bright or damaging the paper sadly it's fallen desperately into ruin uh, part of the ceiling has collapsed uh, crushing many of the books uh, moisture and air has gotten in so the pages have rotten or worn away leather has warped um, yeah, it's a it's a right mess in here, um, and, and it's chaotic as well. Like, if you wanted to search through, this is going to take some time, and you'd have to make a check to actually like see if anything was salvageable. You could do it, but it would just take time. The only thing which has survived, which is still quite beautiful and magical, is on the far western wall, so the left side wall. Uh, there is a untouched mural um, that's made from illusions. It's made from illusory magic. Um, it appears magical and it moves ever so slightly. It shows a man dressed in farmer's clothes building a road, but out of books. Each one, the spine being uh, placed upwards, so to create like bricks. Uh, 
he holds a plain one in his hand next to him and is diligently about is diligently about to place it in the next slot in the road uh in the background you can see many rich uh many robed and rich looking individuals who are pointing and laughing at the man um that's what you can see at a distance anyway Oh, is there anything sadder in the world than a ruined library? All this knowledge, just lost. True. Um, I'm sure it's retained in the uh, followers of Hesper and anyone that has visited this temple, though. And that sink back there probably knows so much about the place. Yes, the sphinx probably does know a lot. Um, how are you, by the way? Are you okay? I, I'm, I'm all right, Nova. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't fully ready for, hey. for that attack. You don't have to apologize for anything, Lucius. Come on now. You've never had to apologize for anything with me. I, I know, but uh, it's still a, a detriment, and it's something that it's going to take some time. Uh, it's affected me more than I thought it would. And that's fine. You need you take all the time you need. It's okay. I understand. You don't have to explain yourself. You know me. I'm just gonna babble and 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 babble until you tell me to shut up. Uh so if you need me to shut up, tell me to shut up. If you need me to keep going so that all you wanna hear is just the sound of me talking about the theory of aerodynamics that could distract you, I'm good for that. I can do that. I will do what you need me to do because I'm here by your side to help you I'm just terrible at helping people the only thing that that kept me going in that moment was hearing your voice giving me encouragement so please keep talking okay it was just there's gonna be a tiny quaver in her voice as she says that because Nova herself yeah. isn't quite over it you know like kind of healing Lucius when he was dying watching him heal Tian Gong she ain't she hasn't quite processed that either so she's just gonna babble and babble and babble and babble about every thought that just comes into her head um and I think that's probably all she's okay. gonna do for Regret. now all right. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> So, stood sort of at the entrance to the library, this kind of beautiful scene around you. Yeah, you guys uh, just take this moment and uh, Nova just kind of chats away about stuff. Um, Sentry, you are making your way in the opposite direction, into the western corridor. It's a bit longer. You kind of make your way down um, and it leads into a large prayer room of a sort. <clears throat> there are... Uh, you can see that there are murals of all sorts of flying creatures engraved into the walls. Um, griffins, pegasus, birds of all different types and shapes and sizes, um, all kind of spread around the, uh, the walls themselves. Sections of the wall, mainly in the four corners, there are these giant kind of gaping pipes, these kind of metal pipes that is kind of loom out and go up into the walls, um, but they're empty. There's just no, no sound coming from them. Uh, you can see that to the north and south there are two doors um, and you can definitely hear the sounds of like <clears throat> uh, kind of muttering or complaining and something metal moving about uh, in the northern room. Okay. Northern room. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Um, okay, I think after hearing that, Sentry's going to... Um hurriedly come back into the room mm -hmm. uh, the main chamber and just uh, say uh, "There's, we're not alone, there's somebody there's somebody in the room behind me uh, to anyone that can like hear it anyone like Quill, sure, Rohan sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll head over I think yeah. I'm like is still the, mid the rant is... <laughs> <laughs> Sphinx is still there right? Yeah, the spirit of the, the ghost of the Sphinx is still there yeah, yeah. Uh, what, uh, did you see who is in the room down there? Do you know anything I'm, about the other people who are in here? I'm afraid I do not. You were the first ah, ones dang. that I've become aware of since my death. But there should be no living soul within this place. 
Okay, well, I heard voices. There's somebody definitely in that room. Hmm. Perhaps they are part, and she gestures to the bodies of the Valkyrian soldiers. I do not remember where these came from. Perhaps that is part of their group, the Valkyrian. Okay. All right, let's keep alert. Our fighting might not yet be done. Um, uh, an Lucius and Nova aren't here, by the way. They're, like, no. yeah, um, in another room. If I, like, head over here, could I just, like, you know, point in the general direction of where they went and cast message? Uh, do you have to be able to see them? Cast this through solid objects if you're familiar with the target and know it's beyond a barrier. Okay, if you can cast it through objects. One foot of stone will... The spell does not make it through. Okay, I'll go retrieve them. I'll go get them. Okay, yeah, Johan, you see the same thing when you enter the library, you see this kind of ruined library, you see this mural with the illusions of the man making the the road out of the books. Um, uh, The book he's holding looks different to all the rest of them. One thing you do notice uh, when you're looking, like all the books in the road have these beautiful spines and they've, you know, got titles. The one he's holding (sighs) is plain. It's just like a plain, empty book that he's just holding in his hand. Uh, But yeah, you see Lucius and Nova. Uh... Sentry, she's she's just come back. She's heard others in the other corridor. We uh, might want to head that way first. Okay. Oh, uh, or they could come Everything here. Is... I think there's something. There's something. I I don't know. I feel like there's probably something we can find here. It, I don't know. I'm cool. I'm cold to this mural. There's something it's trying to teach us. There's something. It, the the sink, um, said that this place was about trials, right? So... No, it was just like. Books. <laughs> Everything it's also just is like, full of. Kim's like Mark is describing this mural in too much detail. I am called to the mural. The mural must have meaning. I'm called to the mural. Well, it's like freaking Indiana Jones and like the the last one with the cup, and it's like you gotta drink from the plain cup because the Jesus cup is not a fancy cup, and if you drink from the fancy cup, and it's a plain book, it's a plain book, and there's loads of rich dudes Johan's behind it laughing at the plain. Out, back out of the room. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you start backing out of the room, Nova, when you approach the mural, uh, you hear a voice. Everybody in the room hears a voice. Um, if a wise man is someone who asks a lot of questions, then what is a fool? Someone who asks no questions. Nothing changes. Perry, because he never paid attention in class. No answers. <laughs> I'm gonna Someone see. with no knowledge. Someone with no learning. Someone with no interest in learning. One who doesn't listen. I think that there is a pause. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think anything changes just yet. It just repeats, actually, Johan, when you approach it, it repeats the question. If a wise man is someone who asks a lot of questions, then what is a fool? The one who asks the wrong questions. No change. Hmm. One who has no answers? No change. Or has the wrong answers? Meanwhile, uh, Johan and that don't (laughs) return immediately. (laughs) For the rest of you, Sentry and Lucius and Quill, uh, sorry, Sentry, Ayla and Quill. Can uh, I, um, you can't. Uh, you don't hear the creatures. Like you don't hear the noise. The people that you heard before, Sentry, or the things that you yeah. heard before. I should say you don't hear them coming like back this direction. Um, you do hear some like okay. metal clanging, maybe like a blast of wind, like a, and then it stops. Hmm. Okay. Ayla, Weird. sorry. I was just gonna um, messenger ring. Oh, yeah. Guys, <laughs> what are we doing? doing? We, should, um, Guys. we should get back with the others. There's a, there's people here. Guys. We'll come Guys. back to this. Well, there's a puzzle in this oh. library. There's a puzzle in oh. this library. You both, what did you say, Ramps? What, did, what was it you said out loud? One who thinks they know it all. Ah, and with that... I s- the oh! first, you didn't say it like that. One well, who thinks that they, they know okay. it all thinks it has the answers. Um, the, the figure, the farmer who's placing <laughs> the book, the face turns and winks at you. 
and then the heart, the arm moves and holds out the book, but you see that from the mural, the hand becomes real, and the book was once plain, is now embellished with silver and gold, um, and then in a very detailed draconic script written on it, and it holds it out to you, Johan. Uh, can I take it and read it? Uh, you take the book. Um, yeah, you... Oh, wait, draconic you, script. Uh, can you read, can read draconic? draconic? No, I cannot. Okay. You can read Draconic. Okay. Well, pass God, over if, to... if Nova looks at it, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Nova, the <laughs> title of this book is The Sum of All Understanding by A. Plumbus. Hey! Oh, for f- he's back! <laughs> uh, oh, throw it Johan. immediately! <laughs> well, Johan's holding yeah. it. You're not, you're not holding it. Johan's holding it. Oh, Johan, this, you can, this, this, when you, like, holding this book, like, this is a magic book. This isn't like just a book. Ooh. It is a magical tome. Um, this thing you, you don't know what it does. Like it needs power. to be identified, but you can tell it's yeah. magical. I'm feeling some sort of power from this. Any? Can any of you suss that out? It's a magic. I can bookie. tell you that a a plumbus <laughs> is a very knowledgeable person. A plumbus. I've... Can't I say really I've heard think that name. we should be getting back with the others now, everyone. Yeah, let's go. Meanwhile, I... since since they they've gone quiet after Nova said the word puzzle, I'm gonna mm-hmm. assume Stop that she's your way. somewhere stuck in a puzzle yeah. and start making my way down that corridor sure. towards them. <laughs> Sentry Quill. Yes, then Sentry's coming along with Ayla. Just like yeah, sure. let's go get him. What about Quill? <laughs> And I, I, I wanted to, in that entire time, I wanted to stand on the golden circle and see if I can divine anything uh, unique from it, from, from what Johan said. Do you want to, is this a, like, spiritual or is this a physical inspection? Uh, spiritually, I'll, I'll uh, bow down to Hesper. Uh, a little bit annoyed now, like the question of is the storm my greatest enemy. So we're starting to question that one. Um, sure. But yeah, uh, see if I can pick anything up from it. Sure. You get the sense kneeling on this disc. Like an awakening of your mind. This disc leads to a, nif- a different part of the temple. You don't know how, but you know that this disc and the disc above you will lead you to the trials that you need to face, and maybe to the sanctum where this spear is. This is... You need to find a way past these. And in terms of whether your question, it's not really like a message. It's more of a sensation. A kind of mixture of... Like a teacher who is not disappointed, but look gives you a look that's if to say you know that that's not the answer think this through you can solve this you big dumb dumb okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah use your brain tom jeez my friggin bird brain <laughs> Ch- channel Meanwhile, a yeah. Ayla and Sentry, you guys make your way and, and see the other three kind of making their way out um, as they are heading back in your direction. Uh, Johan is carrying a very nice looking book. Uh, but other than that, it seemed fine. You can see that where the direction that they're coming from, there is um, a door that they, they didn't come from. They, they came from like a corridor that connected to, but behind them is another door that seems to lead into a chamber, you assume. Uh, are you all okay? again? What's the name of the book? Uh, the sum of, the, all, the sum of all understanding by A. Plumbus. We're okay, thank you, Sentry. Uh, we have this book now. The library over there is destroyed, ruined. Oh no! Mm. It's awful. It What's is pretty. The... I heard. Yes. You heard a commotion or something? Yeah. I was... I heard like a metal clanking noise and some voices coming from a room in the opposite chamber. There's also some metal pipes on the wall. I think we can investigate those a little bit further. We should stick together. But I don't think now. we're alone. If there's still people yeah. here. What was that? What was that feeling I got, Mark, about or, or being told that I had I had to, someone smart could fix fix the wind in here? 
I, I, I don't know what feeling you are referring to, but no, yeah, no, I when mean, I kneeled, when I kneeled down, yeah. you said I, I got this feeling, and uh, all this stuff happened, and you said you get it was that the... the wind could be channeled in here or something like that. Yeah, Someone it was when you were in the stone basin, the stone basin. You yeah. could feel there was a breeze there. You tried to kind of make the wind stronger, oh, okay, but it was being okay. blocked by something, and you felt that like okay. it was fresh air. It must be coming from somewhere. But okay. it was blocked uh, in some gotcha. way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, you guys, if you guys make your way back into the main room, you see Quill kneeling on the golden disc, looking perplexed and confused. Um, Thomas Hazel, I want to make I'm the just, point uh... that you chose to play a cleric of the god of knowledge and a wizard, and I'm going to yeah. give you this this metaphorical shit to deal with. <laughs> no, I mean if. It's also like if Johan is saying that some mechanism will bring about the wind, then like there's probably nothing that can be done now anyway. Uh... Oh fuck! I am the mechanism, aren't I? I'll just I'll just walk <laughs> over there and be like, "Don't want to add to your problems, but here's this," and throw the book at him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you, he gives you this this very fancy looking book in silver and gold. Um, Quill, when you look at it. Um, it's not by A. Plumbus. Um, it's by Hesper. It says Does it have by Hesper. a silver feather on it? Uh, no, it's it's silver and gold in like the kind of wrappings and things like that. Because um... uh, I was wondering if it's similar to that book that I divined when I came back to Erois in the tower that was with the, uh, the ghost spirit. lady. Ah, yeah. no, different book. Yeah. The rose different book. book, yeah. Um, it, it, you can tell, oh, like Johan, this is a magical book. This is magic. Um, you will need to identify it if you wish to know what it is. Um, huh. I was hoping for an A Plumbus. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I will. Yeah, I'll. I'll. Um, I'll, uh, I'll identify it then. Okay. Uh, I will tell you. This is a tome of understanding. So you can add that to your inventory. Uh, a Tome of Understanding. This book contains intuition and insight exercises, and its words are charged with magic. If you spend 48 hours over a period of six days or fewer studying the book's contents and practicing its guidelines, your wisdom score increases by two, as does your maximum for that score. The manual then loses its magic, but regains it in a hundred years. Oh. Wow. Ooh, pretty cool. 22. Do wisdom. That sounds pretty juicy. <laughs> That's it does possible. require you to um, spend significant amount of time. Yes, with these books, it's possible to go above 20. Um, same with the belt can increase the strength nice. beyond 20 as well. I just noticed that Ayla's stats are wrong. Her strength is 25 now. We'll need to change that on the overlay. Oh, it's, oh well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because on the overlay, I was going to say, in Dindy Beyond, it should be correct. Yeah. She's strong. Oh, yeah. Uh, just on the overlay. But yeah, this is a magic book that when you read it and you consume its contents, it will increase your natural wisdom. Uh. Uh, okay. Th thanks, Johan. You just went into that room and brought back something this powerful? Uh, this is a plumbus, a powerful wizard? <laughs> a, a plumbus is an author. This is Hesper. Hesper wrote this book. It's, 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 an, it, it's, it's, it says right there that it's from a plumbus. It's, he's pointing at where it says Hesper. Um, okay. Okay. I mean, it's it's, it's. it's. I mean, it's right, right there. I, are are your eyes okay? Are you sure you haven't had any berries? Trust me, my eyes are wonderful. How dare you? <laughs> A plumbus. <laughs> Esper. Anyway. Anyway, is, was there any... H-E-S-P-E-R-A-P-L-E-R-B-E-R. <laughs> -E <laughs> <laughs> -E <laughs> um, well, was there any any way of, 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 of blessing this room with the winds of... I mean, we have a book that is all knowledge. Was there... We have this, to unblock is this, is this... that mechanism. Okay, well, this disc will take us to the further levels of this, this, this trial that Hesper is set for 
me and well, all of us. Um, one that requires, well, knowledge. No doubt surpassing or equaling his infinite wisdom, which is just wonderful. It's typical of Hesper. The storm, well, the storm is not my enemy. The storm took everything away from me, away from my family, away from my teachings, away from it Sorry. all. Sorry have suggested it my bad sorry i've really struck a nerve here but you know uh i got well, hit by it... a lot of lightning recently my brain doesn't work <laughs> excuses but it can't be the storm the struck. storm resides in there the storm resides in johan and it's... ayla and has protected me so many times how can the storm be my enemy the so thing quill if if i could just i feel like you're kind of you know breathe one, two, three, four, and exhale. Two, three, four. I, I would like to just posit my theory uh, that uh, if we're going to be metaphorical like Hesper loves to be, um, it could be something like time or death is our greatest enemy, okay. uh, uh, perhaps. Um, I don't mean to play uh, Starbane's advocate here, but uh, how about we fix the mechanism behind us first before we try solve also, the riddle? I think Johan's onto something there. Priorities. Priorities, indeed. I look at the book. Uh, um. <laughs> Two, three, four. <laughs> I'm just gonna go and stand over here. You just let me know if you need me to, you know, hand hit hit things. I'm just gonna. Too smart for me. Step back. Mark Humes. Can I yes. go over to this door that there was clanking noises by? And uh, yeah, I... so you have to make your way into the chamber that Sentry was in before, this kind of prayer room with the engravings of the flying creatures, these pipes in the corners. Um, as you enter, one of them, you feel like the strong breeze, like a wind kind of washes over you. Um, and then maybe sounds like a, a very, very high-pitched voice um, beyond the stone door to the north. Uh, it's kind of muffled a little bit. Like, you can hear that there's, like, scaling winds coming from that room like this immense kind of pressure of wind but when it dies down you just hear the final clip as if uh, a little voice was just oh for goodness sake like kind of you know cursing through the door like uh, in fact it would say by it would say uh oh, by the emperor can i use uh ghostly gaze which will allow me to see through solid objects uh, for a How thick solid objects? Um, Dummy thick. It just says solid <laughs> option. It just says solid objects with dark vision ah? to a range okay. of 30 feet. Ah, that's okay. So range, to a, range, range of, 30 of 30 feet. feet. That's good to know. Okay. So when you look through, you look through the door, this stone door uh, that's engraved into the northern wall. You look through and th the first thing you see uh in this chamber is uh there is a set of stone steps that goes up and then the rest of the room is kind of beyond that vision so it kind of stops and you don't get to see much more of the room this seems to be quite a large room you do see uh stood almost maybe like 15 feet in front of the door that you're currently looking through you see the back of a young girl like she can't be more than 10 11 uh roughly cut dress like really shoddily cut and tailored um hands on hips just kind of staring at something that you can't see in the room um and there is one large golden chain hanging down just on the very edge of your vision um and you can see them you can't hear through it but you see her like gesturing and pointing and things like that um does she look similar to vala um no no uh she has almost greenish tinged hair like a very dark green hair uh that's kind of loose around her shoulders it's actually quite long and messy um you can see like oversized bracelets around her arms that almost look like an adult's bracelet but she's wearing them um and yeah barefoot and is just sort of like pointing and gesturing at something but it doesn't look like they can hear like yeah you can hear like this very loud wind coming from that room um, one of the chains that you can't, you can see, no, you wouldn't be able to see that chain, actually. You can just see this one chain that's not being pulled. Yeah. No one else in the room? Just her? Uh, in the 30 feet past the door that you can see? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll return to 
team argues a lot and uh, belay this information to everybody. Um, that there's a girl in the room, blah blah blah, chain, 30 foot, could be others. And she's cussing about the Emperor. Okay. Is she right. wearing Valkyrian uniform? Uh, rough, rough cut clothing. No, d no emblems, nothing, but she did say something about by the Emperor or something like that. We need to be cautious here. Just in case. Uh, can I, can I like go into the chamber where the pipes are and um, mm -hmm. summon Echo to maybe, can you fit through one of the pipes to see if there's maybe like a blockage ah. or anything in there? Yes, Echo will fit through one of these pipes. They're quite large. Um, they're like mouths uh, of, of or horns carved into the shape of like, you know, signaling horns. Um, and he can fit inside uh, and Echo can boop, 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 this little ball made of brambles and twine and metal. Um, it's dark inside, but he has dark vision. And so Echo begins flowing up. Uh, the, the, the pipe goes up and then it splits. So it continues going up really high. He kind of goes at an angle and then it just seems to go up and up and up and up and up um he can't see like you can send, start sending him up that way but it will take some time the other one is it seems to lead into the room that nova just looked into um it seems to lead into there hmm which direction okay. would you like echo to go let's let's go into the room let's just let's get okay. a good get, get a little look just make a stealth check for echo for me please okie dokie Uh, what would Echo's... Hmm. Uh, you might not have his stats for him, I guess, anymore. I don't think I've got his stats for him, yeah, because it's... Uh, I think he only away. had, like, a... I think he had, like, a plus three bonus, let's say. Like, he wasn't super, like, mega stealth. No. So, so 13? Yeah, 13, probably. Yeah, let's just go with that. Okay. So, Echo, and you see, floats into this kind of uh, second pipe, and then lowers down, and it goes into a much larger opening. Um, and he looks into a room, seeing more than what Nova could. The room is quite large. Uh, there is a stone staircase that spirals up, and it seems to go up very, very high. The middle of which, separated by sort of a good sort of like 10 feet, uh, 15 feet between them, are four huge golden chains that hang down from somewhere up above. Echo can't see that far up. It's, he can only see these chains dangling down in his vision. There are two... Uh, constructed magitech constructs very similar to the one that you fought on the storm chaser when you met johan last time these kind of crab like uh creatures but these ones are bipedal they actually have like four arms two smaller arms and then two large shoulder arms um, and they've gripped the chains and they're pulling them down um, and as they do one of the pipes opposite echo blasts incredibly strong wind into the room cutting across the middle of it where there appears to be another golden disc um stood in its place uh but they blast it and and yeah the, the air just doesn't seem to fully you know open up kind of thing mm. um stood next to them uh you glance at echo just catches a glimpse of her before uh she basically looks to be she can't be any more like she's petals age you know she looks like yeah. 10 or 11 uh green hair very wild like vines and tangles around her um pouty little face uh looks kind of uh, a little bit annoyed when you first see her really rough cut tunic um as if somebody's hastily quickly made it for her uh big bracelets around her arms and then no shoes um and she glances is looking around and seems to look directly at echo uh, her face, she kind of like tilts her head a little bit in confusion. Um, and then her eyes kind of light up as if she's seeing, you know, she kind of, her eyes quickly lighten up. Um, and she runs over to kind of get a closer look at Echo. Can I pull Echo back? Just... Yeah, so you get out of there. You you see like the 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 girl kind of pokes her head in and is now looking around inside the uh, tunnel. She seems to call back something, but Echo can't hear. She just calls back something to the creatures in the room. Um, ah, okay. So there's okay. And then whoop, 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 whoop. Hmm. alrighty. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
okay. It's okay. Okay, it's okay. What'd you do? Uh, I, I think there's somebody else with her. I th she just, I think she tried to call back to something. There's so something else is with her. But yeah, young girl, like Nova said. What are they doing in there? She, uh, so she's trying to do, she's trying to do something. I'm I'm not sure. There's a there's a pipe that blows wind out. I don't know if it's to do with the mechanism that uh, that Johan mentioned. Maybe she's trying to activate that. But she's so young. Why is what what is she doing here? Another mystery. <laughs> Another mystery. Another mystery cryptic gang. mystery. <laughs> Add it to the pile of mysteries. So, what's the plan? Do we just go in? There's two of them. As, as you guys are having this discussion, thinking things over, uh, where is everybody? Are you all in the prayer room outside this chamber yeah. where the, the girl is? So you're all in that same chamber, yeah? yeah? I'd, uh... I think so. Quill, Ayla, same? Sounds like everybody yeah, is there. I've, I don't know I've where this prayer room is century. in relation to. Uh, it's on the western side, uh, Ayla, so I haven't drawn a map for it. So, um, okay. Just move you in. So it's in a different room. It's a, off to the western side. Okay. Um, I mean, I think okay. she'd probably be hanging back a little bit because she feels a bit. Meh. I'm useless I can't do here. So. Okay, sure. Um, well, you never know. That that kind of practical thinking may have uh, may be more useful than you think. Uh, well, at the moment, she just feels like this is a place of knowledge, and she's just giving Quill a little bit of space. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, knowledge is a different thing to different people. The doors of the prayer chamber, where into this chamber with the chains and the the wind blowing, and this little girl, the doors open, and these metallic creatures. Uh, yeah, emerge out, and they have got all four arms pointed. Uh, and next week we're going to roll initiative, but that's where we're going to end it today. It's a little oh, bit early. God, but... Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, like, I don't want to start a combat right away. Like, ten minutes to go. No. Like, we're going to have to just roll into next week. So, um... damn. All right. Are these the crab oh, things? They are yeah. different. It's like an upgraded version of the crab okay. robots. <laughs> Even worse. Uh, they are so like they're, they're they're less crab like. They're like a human meets a crab in a robot form. So it's got like a big carapace back, these four arms uh, with a giant like clawed hands and then two more manipulator arms, uh, beady eye stalks, uh, but all made of like metal, like constructs. Um, yeah. Upgraded crab men. And was this the, these were the things that like absorbed my lightning attacks last time, didn't they? It, that's what the last versions did. Whether okay. these versions are the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Mark Humes. All right, Mark Humes. Yeah, I'm on you. No, you fucking. I'll never tell. Uh... I'll never tell. <laughs> never tell. Crap, uh, but yeah, I'll we will come back to <laughs> this temple of knowledge next week uh, and give Tom a week to think about what all of this can mean. Uh... I think I, I think I know the answer. I think I do know the answer. It's okay, uh, I'm great. leading into it in some way. Uh, okay. Slowly, surely, badly, slowly, slowly, surely. That's Quill. I love it. I love it. Perfect. Uh, well, anything left to read out? Um, if not, uh, uh, we can wrap things up. Yes, indeed, there is. Uh, let me do a refresh on Streamlabs. But uh, there was a donation from several Some fish get there. have donated several fish okay. have donated one dollar each leading to twenty dollars you could argue there's 20 fish i don't know why my talk at last after months of binging a rois on my commute to work about two and a half hours i'm finally caught up love all you guys uh love all that you guys do so here's a little something to show my appreciation for helping all of us through these less than ideal times love from L I N Y. I don't know what L I is. Don't Anyone with state knowledge? Is it state? I don't know. Uh, Louisiana. L -I. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Long Island. Long uh, Island. Uh, Mississippi. Uh, Varys. <laughs> Uh, has donated uh, with no message. Thank you very much. Frost Giant 521. VOD squad this week, I'm afraid, so no one die on me, especially my cyberb. 
Uh, loving Aroas yeah. and it's a, a good escape from what's currently happening. So thank you. Side note, what's the difference in donating in dollars and pounds or does it matter? Uh, dollar, if you donate in pounds, it gets converted into dollars. I think that's, that's how it works, right? I don't know how Streamlabs works. I have no idea. And then it gets no. converted back to pounds. Back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 PayPal is it. Um, There's no difference. Do it in your own currency. Um, yeah. Save yourself the fees. Yeah. Yes, Sounds absolutely. Good. Serial Jester. Uh, last time Katie had a strength belt, it turned her into a cloud giant. I bet this time she's going to turn into a storm giant. Oh, no, yeah. it's just a belt of strength this time. It's just a belt of strength. Just but putting that, putting that one out there now. It's a belt of strength storm with giant. cool storm powers. That's it. Yeah. Graying Badger. Uh, donating for more BDE. Big Burb Heels. B D B B H then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mudkip. Uh oh. oh Tom no. and Purple Tick Re. Congratulations! Clap 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 clap. Katie, Thank Kim, you. Trot, Matt, and the one, the legend, the Ravs. Ravs boing. Any boingers in chat? Is it just me, <laughs> the one and only Mudkip? Proud of you, Cloud Man, Johan. Birdman could learn a bit. <laughs> Praise Tom Ato. <laughs> Fuck me. I swear to <laughs> <I'm laughs> It just it, it makes no sense to any of us except Tom Ree and Rams, apparently. <laughs> That's what scares me is is how yeah. much I understand it. Um <laughs> That's a little two four six. Uh just wanted to say thank you for the reminder that heroes come from all shapes and sizes, that they face challenges and struggles just like the rest of us, from Quill's arm to Lucius's new health condition. Thank you for your inclusion. And bringing awareness. Yeah, that's there you go. Trot started that last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Important. Uh, Mudkip, important. super important. Mudkip again. Oh, good God. Tom, Tom, Tom. What do we say to Thunderbolt and Lightning? Very, very frightening me. Killek, oh Killek. When you hear the sound <laughs> of thunder, don't you get too scared? Just grab your thunder buddy and say these magic words. Fuck you, thunder. Just one of Johan's farts. Okay. <laughs> wow. Very, very fishy. Very fishy. <laughs> very fishy. Um, nice. <laughs> Savage oh, Cave yeah, Penguin. Watching you legends is the highlight of my week. A rose is amazing and I can't wait to see where it leads, especially with Lucius's post-turtle stress disorder. Keep being you. Thank you very much. Nice. Samwise, nice. Samwise 2450, a library in a Rois. At this time of year, completely localized within your campaign, I bet this yes. library has a lot written by and about a plumbus, the greatest polymath of our yeah. age. Hmm, maybe, Weird. I'll never tell. Maybe. Uh, the, Tom, <laughs> maybe Quill will find Birdman for beginners. Birdman will be bird soon. <laughs> sure, thank sure. you. Um, <laughs> Nick has donated. Great episode, but this campaign would be... Better with the great Tom Arto. He is a legendary fighter. <laughs> uh, the ultimate the chosen enemy. one. The chosen if Sentry one. dies, if Sentry, if Sentry no, dies. No, oh, I beat Tom Arto. I beat no. it. No. Ray, I'm sorry, no. no. That's a hard no. no. That's, That's a hard no. no. I rarely will say no. That's a hard no. I will turn I this campaign move. around. I got a hard no. <laughs> I'll just, I'll kill um, the campaign. I'll just be like, no, Hadar win. You're all dead. You're done. Can't, yeah, risk, it. can't okay. risk it. Yeah. For Ramses' sake, uh, Tomato is a, a glorious character that remade in Baldur's Gate 3. I've seen it. I've seen the art of it, and it's uh, it's it's something. It's beautiful. It's, it's a rich tomato. tomato. He's he's a what a legend. The chosen one. Something. Yeah, he's something. Um, All right. Speaking of the chosen one, we have another donation from Mudkip. (laughs) So Matt, so Matt, so Matt, 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 Mudkip here. I'm very happy (laughs) that you confirmed that A Plumbus is Hesper Munker. Hmm. Good for you, Tom. A Plumbus is going to help make Quill's bird brain, Bird Brian. Yes, be strong. (laughs) Big Bird Brian. Big Bird Brian Brain. Big Bird Brain Brian Brain. Praise A Plumbus. <laughs> I can't tell if Tom's reading out exactly what's written or if he's just repeating it to get his head around it. Now, I, I will admit I added only one bit to that, and that was an extra Big Bird Brian Brain Brian. Uh, the rest of that, 
Old, old, old mudkip. Old mudkip. Right. Fr- pure we mudkip. have to wrap up Alex. now. <laughs> it's like four okay. Minutes. I mean, I've, there's one more, and then some more. donation, and then some gifted subs. Yeah, we've um, had some okay. very gifting people today. Yes. When I say one, I actually mean four. Alex Fraud, thirty-two dollar dues, only just caught up on the last twenty episodes in the last two weeks. Wow, just wow at how amazing right. the story well and everyone has been through this crazy space journey. Glad the party have finally got home. I'm sure everything will be just fine from now on. Smiley face. Hmm. Smiley face. Digby Tatham Water, thirty-five dollar dues. Thank you and welcome back, friend. Have a round of drinks on me. Another great session. Even learn something. Really love the road to knowledge metaphor. Have a good week, and we will see you all next Sunday. Thank you very much. Oh, hey, Thanks. it's Austin has donated. Uh, I'm slowly becoming more and more convinced that A. Plumbus is a divine being from the dawn of time. I'll never tell. Dark Day 41 <laughs> uh, with a donation and no message. Thank you very much. And also, there was like a billion gifted subs. Yes. It was like four uh, billion I've gifted got them here. subs. Count them. Uh, we had gifted subs from Sun Tiger 745, uh, Kadrian 232, and just an insane amount from Keishi uh, today. There was uh, 70 or 80 gifted subs from Keishi. Wow. These are all in the HR, uh, High Rollers D&D Twitch chat. Uh, we don't do the ones what? on Yogs. So uh, th- thank you very much for those generous thank gifted you. subs, everybody. Um, Ravs, you are able to join us Hello. next week, yes? I am indeed. I am indeed. Excellent. I'll be back next week. Hey. Well, you'll it's be back as long lovely. as until until this temple is cleared, my mm-hmm. friend. I'm going to keep asking you to mm-hmm. come back. So this is the, the I I am so. available for the next couple of weeks. So if it Perfect. drags on, I'm here. Hear that, Tom? Did you drags say dragon? <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> That's it. It's the clue. He's, He's done it. He's oh, oh, Rav, He's giving it away. <laughs> hey, don't worry. I don't speak draconic, Tim. so you know. You're, yeah. you're if you did, I would have been all over yeah. there. <laughs> you yeah, I almost wanted to pre- pretend to be like, ah, yes, of course, <laughs> draconic, <laughs> just to wind you up. Yeah. My people's language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. Just, just. I just am the right. dragon man. <laughs> right. Just well, fisherman. with that. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in and checking out this episode of High Rollers. We will be back uh, on the High Rollers D&D channel on Tuesday for more Baldur's Gate 3 with uh, Mr. Tomato and the Sunshine Squad. Um, and then we'll yep. be back on Thursday. And this is an important one. Thursday for Curse of Strahd. It's our Halloween episode, which means we'll be dressed up. Some of us, anyway. Um, I'm excited. Ree's excited. Uh, Katie's got a cool costume. Tom and Trot will probably pull something be out. And present. I think Kim's going to have a cool costume, too. If she can make it happen, because she wasn't very sure. If I can make it happen, I'm not very sure about it. It's either going to look really cool or really naff. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I'm sure it'll look cool. I'm sure it, well, I'll put it this way, Kim. It'll look cooler than Tom's. So, (laughs) (laughs) low bar. Not wrong. That's true. I spent three pounds so far, and that's uh, all I'm going to (laughs) spend. With that, we will see you on Thursday, friends. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ravs. Um, Thanks, Ravs. Enjoy. Thanks for having us. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.